Hello, everyone. <laughs> Apologies for the lateness. Um, we had some technical issues, but now we are back. Um, how is everyone doing? Um, I want to say a huge shout out to my old subscribers, uh, again, for the support over the years. And shout out to my new subscribers for joining the international passport movement. Um, I want to say a huge shout out to my first cash app, literally uh, 15 minutes ago. Shout out to Michael Conte for the £7.34 cash app. He says, "I for I already know this will be an amazing live stream. Yes, indeed. we got the legends, uh, Theo and, and Tony Berry. Brothers, um, as you can see in the live stream chat, in the, sorry, in the title of the live stream, um, we will be discussing how you can successfully move to Japan and live there. Um, both Theo and Tony have lived in Japan for many years, and they will be give, breaking down um, what you need to do to move from US, UK uh, to Japan, live a great life there, establish yourself there, and branch out and be successful there. Uh, but before I actually ask the brothers to introduce themselves, uh, brothers, can you please hit the like button? Uh, of course, support the channel for the Cash App and support the channel for the Super Chats. It's much appreciated. Um, so, Theo and Tony, unmute yourself, please, brothers. How how um, how are you, brothers, both doing? Everything good? Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah. Start starting with Theo. And yep, Tony, fine. Yep. Starting with Theo and then Tony afterwards. Can you please introduce yourselves to as to who you are, um, why you're knowledgeable on this Japan aspect, and um, we'll go on from there. Starting with Theo. Okay, so my name is Theodore. Um, I go by Theo Laugh uh, online on YouTube. Um, I'm an IT computer specialist focusing on cloud and web application firewalls, particularly on the cloud. I've been doing, uh, I started my career in Tokyo doing IT security uh, there. I'm fluent in Japanese. I've, I've also lived in Russia and France. Um, yeah, I lived the big story of my life is actually my years in Japan and absolutely fantastic. And I have a lot of information to give. I travel a lot. So um, that, that's me. Go ahead and take it to you, Tony. Okay. Hey, guys. Hi, I'm Tony Berry. I'm a software engineer. Um, I've been doing the software engineer thing since, uh, since uh, over 10 years, almost 11 years now. Uh, so what I do is I do, the, I do everything, man, from front to back. And I do the sourcing, coding, building, monitoring, deploying. So I do the whole thing on that. I'm, I'm using Amazon Web Services, AWS on that system, also doing security. Uh, so I do a lot on that end and, you know, doing APIs, integrations, things like that. So that's what I do. Fantastic, brothers. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, these two brothers have um, many years in Japan. And, and brothers, let me warn you, buckle up. This is probably going to be a five-hour live stream, four hours, to be honest. It's going to be a lot of information to prepare you and live in a good life in Japan. But before I go any further, I've got a couple of super chats. Uh, shout out to Elephant Room 219 for the $10 super chat. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated, bro. Shout out to Jay Takashi for the $5 super chat. It says, Theo, Tony Berry, Team Asia, we are here to win. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, disclaimer, guys, the, the Team Asia versus Team Latino stream will probably be happening in November. So I will set up the panel. So Theo and Tony will definitely be on that panel uh, for Team Asia. Maybe one or two more. And then I get four people for Team Latina. So give me some time with that, brothers. Um, oh, Theo. Damn. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Oh, man. Damn. Bro. Just, to Theo. just, so, oh, just so that La Team Latina can understand who they're messing with. All right. <laughs> 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 Yo, shout out to Mr. Theo W A F for $110 super chat. Thank you so much, brother, for the support, bro. I appreciate it, Theo. You know I respect you a lot, Theo. You've done a lot for Thank you. me, particularly in terms of the knowledge you you provided for these live streams. And of course the super chat, bro. I, I'm I'm grateful, uh, Theo. Thank you very much. He Thanks, says brother. here nice. Team Asia is here to win. Oh, we'll, we'll wait and see in November, uh, Theo, when we put it to a vote. Um, shout out to um, Elephant Room, uh, 219, for the $20 super chat. He says, Theo and Tony together. Wow, yeah, this is going to be... This This is like um, uh, Nas and Jay-Z collaborating. You know, so, 
Um, <laughs> shout out to um, Joe Abundance uh, for the one night stand dollar super chat. For your wife, the living legend. Yes. Thank you, Theo and Tony. Let's start the stream now, brothers. Um, first question is uh, both Theo and Tony is um, how can brothers successfully move from the US and the UK and Canada to Japan? What is the best avenue? Mm. What kind of job should we look for in Japan? Uh, what's the easiest way to actually move to Japan from these Western countries? Break it down, brothers, starting with um, Theo WAF. <laughs> Okay, you have to understand that there's a difference with the U.S., U.K. getting a visa to the United States, to Japan versus Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And that's because the latter three countries can do the holiday uh, visa and that you, don't, you only need a high school education. You can go straight over. Whereas the U.K. and the United States, you must have a four-year university degree unless you're married to a native. So that's a big hurdle for some people. Um, so when I went to Japan, I mean, um, I've met plenty of Aussies who didn't have college educations, but they are there on the, on the holiday visa. Um, so the first thing you got to do is, and this, is what caused, this is what caused me a year of delay to get to Japan, was actually waiting for the university diploma. So what happened was that I graduated. I wanted to get a job in Japan. My university would not give me the university diploma the physical one for three months. That's just the way they were. They audited it. They were me, putting through me through an audit. Uh, so I had to wait and the Japanese government would not accept any other document except the actual diploma. So that meant I had to go to grad school. And so then what happens is that when the, the, the diploma comes out and, and now the, the requirement is, is that it has to be uh, verified by an th independent third party. So you have to have that documentation you cannot get a visa without this document so don't even try so if you get it if you have if you have it then you can start doing the, the process of actually interviewing and getting the job and so once you get the job the actual getting the visa is very quick it's like two or three months like boom it's so simple compared to the actual getting the diploma um and so basically once you get the working visa uh you can go there um get a one-way ticket and you need to go to a gaijin house now the only other change i'll, I'll talk about is that maybe tony will also talk about is now you can go to japan and look for a job while you're there and then if you get the job you can apply for the visa and you can actually get a working visa while you're in japan however this is the big however thing they still require you to have that diploma and it needs to be verified. It needs to be uh, independently third party verified. If it's not, it doesn't matter if you go there and get the job and, you get a, and somebody offers it to you, you will not get the visa as a UK and American citizen. I'm done with my side. That's just getting your foot in the door. Like That's like first day, your first 10 minutes in Japan. You have to know this point or else your first 10 minutes are screwed. All right. So you go ahead and take it, Tony. And, and, I, and I can expound on that. So I have experience with that. So uh, I was in grad school uh, and I, you know, nobody was getting a job when I was in grad school. So I took two semesters, dropped out, gave, went to Japan, gave myself two weeks to find a job. I had my degree. I also took at that time, you didn't need a third party a verification. I had my transcripts with me. So I had them sealed in an envelope. So I had like five or six envelopes of so I'd ordered like five or six transcripts. And I was going to job interviews and I was just giving the transcript. They would open up and they would see that I had a college degree. I actually got hired that way. I got hired in three days. Mm -hmm. I gave myself two weeks. I got hired in three days because I had the diploma. Went back to the U.S. to get my stuff and then went flew back to Japan after that. So, so that's the way I got in there. But like Theo said, if you don't have that, it's not going to work. Now, you do have the Aussies, the people who, who with the working holiday agreement with the Japanese government. They can come in. And they can get their jobs. But now keep in mind, they may not necessarily get a full-time job. They may only get part-time. When I was working for, for English schools, they would only give them 20-hour work. Okay? Unless they, if they had a spouse, then they could work as long as they want. But they would start them off at 20, and then they would test them out. Then we give them 40. That depends on the school. It depends on the company that you're working for. Okay. I saw, I saw the Aussies with, like, holiday visas. Mm -hmm. And they were making like six, seven thousand dollars a month. They were richer than I was. 
Yes, and me too. I saw the same thing. Agree. And I was, I was looking at them like, I'm so hungry, and you guys have plenty of money. I'm just going to copy what you guys do. That was my <laughs> yes. point of view when I saw them. You know what yeah. Leo's getting at, too, on that? The reason why they were able to do that, because they'd be working for three or four different companies, right? So mm-hmm. they would, like, do their 20 hours here, and then they would go across the street to another English school, and they're scheduled, like, say, if they hit a 10 to 1 here, they would go across the street, and they start at 1.30 or whatever, and they go... And they would they would hustle. They would hustle all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hustled, and I was able to make like forty eight thousand dollars a year because I worked pretty much every day at the school I was at. Right, that still wasn't enough for what I was doing. But in ninety forty eight was was pretty much like making sixty five today. You know, okay. and I lived pretty good in Japan. Or just on that, I wouldn't recommend that now. But back then, it was okay. Okay. Now what? Yeah, and there's some. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Theo. I'm sorry. I just want to I want to put one point on that. If you're just an English teacher your tax rate should only have been 6% and there wasn't yes. any other deduction. So only 6% and you're making yes. like $48,000. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing well. Yes. I, I was doing well. And, and I know IP, you asked about um, how to get a job over there, how to do things. Here's what I want to add to this is it depends on the age you are, like the phase of your life. If you will, let's take the word age out. Let's put the phase of your life that you're in. For example, me, I'm I'm lean, I'm more toward the retirement phase, right? Then you got those mid-level people that that just want to explore Japan and they heard about it. They're in their like 30s or 40s and they want to go there. And then you have the ones that are under 30, which are that's what the Japanese prefer, especially in English. That they really still they'll hire anybody, but their ideal English teacher is the 21 year old white female. That that is what they really want. The cute, <coughs> bubbly Canadian. UK with the accent, Australia, New Zealand, because they're good for kids because they need a lot of teachers for the children, right? Mm. That's yes. what they really prefer. Yes. You know. So when I went there, I didn't even know I was 30 years old when I was looking or 32 years old when I was looking for an English teaching job. And I thought, oh, I'm not getting nothing, man. This is gonna be hard because I was a 32 year old black male. Shoot, they hired me up in three days. Okay, uh, let me come in there, brothers. Um, shout out to Sean Camp for the fourteen pound and sixty nine cash app. Thank you, bro. Much appreciate it, bro. Uh, shout out to Sean M for the five dollars super chat. He says, "Shout out to IP Tony and Theo. I've been waiting on this stream for a while. I'm ready for another classic stream." Yes, indeed, brothers. If you have any questions, please cash up or super chat your questions. Tony and Theo will not answer questions without you cash up or super chat your questions. This is very good information so far, brothers. So, um. So you're saying um, a brother, you know, a black man can, you know, go f- go to Japan through the, those avenues you recommended, brothers, look for an English teaching job, they will get it very quickly. You know, there wouldn't be any discrimination because you're a black man. No, you know, if, you, if you're American, if you're UK, have the accent, you come from the West, you have a job immediately. Would you say so? Uh, going with Tony first. Yeah. Well, uh, see, in other, it also depends on the school too. So the smaller the school, the they may have their wish list of, you know, and they may not want necessarily want a black male or even a male at all. Like I said, it depends on, it, it's not that they're discriminating against you or not. It depends on who their clientele is. If they have a lot of children, like little children, even I taught children too. I taught from six mm-hmm. years on up, but they have a lot of little children. They prefer to have a female because that's a soft hire. Mm. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree with this. Now, let me explain this. How this really oh, another point? How this works? You cannot come in there with a strong black accent. It will not work. In the same way that the Aussies cannot come in with a really strong Australian accent, it won't work. Because if they can't understand the the people who hire you, if they can't understand you, it's not going to work. So, like everybody can hear IP's accent. Your accent, IP, is stellar. It is wonderful. So in Japan, you would get hired as an English teacher in seconds. Mm. Like they would just totally take you. And they wouldn't even care about your race because your accent is so perfect. And then you could teach children very easily. I also taught children. So one of the reasons why I'm as articulate as I am and I make sure that I'm, I'm saying all of my consonants and vowels is because of my English teaching experience in Japan. I'm very aware that if I don't speak correctly, other people will not understand me. So I need to speak in a certain way. Um, as long as you understand that about yourself and you're self-aware and you don't say ah too much like had, 
like <laughs> you're not obnoxious with your vowels. Um, yeah, you're gonna be just fine, and you can get a job very quickly. Fantastic, yeah, brother. You, you you'll come in, you know, and you I can hear IP saying now. But are they checking for brothers with that British accent? <laughs> but are they checking for brothers? You know, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's perfect, man. <laughs> well, you might, uh, you might find the the people who are hiring you. Those people are actually checking for brothers. So they're yeah, like, exactly. They're this, checking for brothers. They're this, checking for brothers. The secretary, the secretary yeah. might be looking for you. So you might get the job because she's hoping you smash her. Like this yes. happened more than once. Yes, yeah. that does happen. I, yeah. Oh my Just goodness! So you know. okay. I, 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 we will come there for you very soon. Uh, shout out to Thomas Demi here for the one pound seventy nine super chat. What's up, Thomas? Where you been at, brother? Thomas. He says, "Big up IP, Tony and Theo. I'm preparing for Japan. I love hearing that. Um, let us know how you're preparing for Japan. Uh, Thomas calling it one in the show. Thomas, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay. Um, can we touch on that part there, Theo, where you said that um, secretaries are looking to, you know, in, in your experience, Theo, what, what did you experience that on that, Theo? Speak on that, bro. <laughs> oh, I saw that more than once where the staff wanted the English teacher. So the, one of the reasons that they wanted, that they hired the, the person, the English teacher, was because the staff members wanted to sleep with them. And this was usually with a female uh, staff member with a male English teacher. And this happened, I don't know how many times... I saw this all the time, particularly with the Aussies. Like the Aussies were like pieces of meat, and um, you got these like tall guys, got these tall blokes. So they're like over six feet tall sometimes, and they wouldn't have a clue, and they would have like no girlfriend at all. They'd just be walking and kind of like daisy. Then people would, yeah, like that. <laughs> like the Japanese girls would just like get on them real quick, man. Those, those guys were just ticking away. Uh, so. That was fun, uh, but there are some, there's there's some who are particularly looking for a black guy. Again, Kanagawa. I talk about Kanagawa quite a bit. That's what my experience was. I had a great time meeting a secretary over there. Um, wow, that was an experience. Twenty five years old. Hmm. It was Damn. good. <laughs> no. Yes. Shout out to Mr. Chill for the four nine seven dollar super chat. He says, hit the like button, y'all. This is a great stream. Yes, get the likes up, brothers. Much appreciated, Mr. Chill. Okay, so let me summarize the whole moving to uh, Japan part. So you're a brother from the UK. You mentioned that earlier on what's to do Tony and Theo. So brothers, when you're making that, um, when, when in your experience, Tony and Theo, when you actually moved to Japan, your, your, all your assets in, in America, how did you handle that? Did you move it all to your parents' house? Did you put something in a garage? Speak on that, brothers. You, Tony, first. This is going to be a long okay, so, answer. So this is, it depends. Like like when I moved to Japan, I had a family. So uh, I just packed up all my stuff, man, and put it on the, on the and uh, had them ship it over, right? But So that's what I did. It, it, at the time, I think it cost me like three grand to do it. But see, here's the thing. You have to make sure you get places, you secure a place to bring it to. And that's the challenge that you're going to run into is getting you a place to live. See, getting a job to me, is the easiest of the whole process, right? As long as you got that degree, you're going to get a job. Because keep in mind, the reason what Theo's saying here is Japan is what we call a licensed country. You need a license for everything. They want to see that paper. So you, you can't even cut hair without a license. You can't do this without a license. You can't do that without a license. They, even if you're not good at what you do, if you got that paper, they'll, you're in the door. They'll let you in. So, so that's what mm -hmm. they do. But yeah, if you're single now, if you're a single person moving over, then yeah, a lot of these guys, they would leave their stuff with their parents or they put it in like mm -hmm. public storage or something and they just jump on the plane and they fly to Japan and get a job. Yeah. Okay, go on, Phil. Okay, so with me, that's pretty much the same story. So I made sure that my housing was secured before I went to Japan and that I got my housing through my um, employer. Now I got I was put into a, what's called a gaijin house or a, a guest house, and at that time it was only foreigners uh, who are living in basically a dormitory. So it's really easy to get into that one of those places. They don't do like checks or anything. They just you have to put a small deposit, usually only about three hundred dollars, and you have to pay the first month's rent, uh, and that's usually about six or seven hundred dollars at the most. And then you have a shared bathroom, shared uh, refrigerators, and, and shared kitchen, also shared living rooms. Mm -hmm. um it's very simple to get in especially if they have internet 
wonderful, then you have it's a very easy place to live. They have air conditioning as well. You have to, you have to usually have to pay for that. Um, so that's the the if you can get in there, if you have you have to think about it like that. You're not going to have an apartment. Don't think that way. Don't think you're going to land there. You're going to have your own apartment. Screw that. That mm. is not going to happen. This is when that's when the st- the craziness starts happening. You need to go there, get into a guest house, have your like if you have a basic English teaching job, that's fine. And then you need to start looking around and start trying to figure out how you're going to navigate this thing because you're landed. And the one of the first things you're going to see is there are gorgeous women everywhere. And oh. they're, for the most part, they're doing better than you. So Ooh. you need to be able to figure out how to, how to get your money up real quick. And this is going to be your first question. Like, wow, how did that, like, there's this an office lady. She only has, like, a junior college education, and she makes, like, $3,000 a month, and she's doing better than me. Okay, what do I need to do? And mm. you, you have to have that personal conversation. Okay. Yeah, it feels right because I know uh, my wife when she graduated from college, she they, you know they showed the recruiters a short bench at school, and she had like three or four offers already. Man, the day she's got out, so she accepted one, and that that job was starting her off at almost three thousand a month. She didn't take the job eventually because we ended up getting married, but still coming out there. Now the average Japanese girl will make less because they don't have a college degree. They'll probably make like about two thousand dollars a month. But still, they're making almost as more you. Most of them are making more than what you're making. So you mm-hmm. have to get there. You have to bring your game if you want to make some money. That's correct. So by law, the minimum wage that Americans and English can be can receive is two hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, sorry, two hundred fifty thousand yen. <laughs> yeah, I was going to fifty thousand yen. So it's two. Yes. It's um two thousand five hundred dollars. Yes, that is by law. So they have to pay you that. So, um, if you're in a guest house, you're not, of course, not living with your family. Um, in the beginning, you're going to be doing kind of badly because everybody else has their families and they're they're, they're living there. You're not. You're just you're yeah. starting out with nothing. So you have to figure out how to get. Like, what do you do? Like, you don't speak the language perfectly. Um, you don't know a lot of navigation. At least you have internet now. Um, and then these, again, these beautiful girls that you're seeing who are like 20 years old, 21, 22, they have a higher standard of living than you do. Damn. Yep. So, and the, yeah, they do. And the thing is, too, is when you're there trying to get, get yourself set up, it, 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 it's no, you, you're on your own. You're literally on your own. And Japan, just to let you know, is not the kind of country where you can go to live and expect to send a lot of money back home. That doesn't work. Not if mm. you're going to be teaching English. If you're going to be yeah. teaching English, no. Some yeah. countries like, the Middle East, you go there, they're writing you a big check because you, you got a big talent and the guys there don't want to work and they don't know. Yeah, but in Japan, no, you get your money. That money's pretty much to live there. Okay, thanks for that, brothers. Yeah. Um, go, go, on, talk, go on, you want to say something else, Fio? No, I, th- this is something I very much agree with. Now, there were people who were sending money back, but these people did not date. They did not go out. They only worked 24-7. Yeah. They were only in a guest house. They were not doing integrations at all. So they could send back some money because they had no desire to actually live and marry a Japanese woman. Now, I also looked at these people as being rather defective and needing therapy. Yes. Like, what's your problem, man? Because there's gorgeous women all around. You're in um, Japan. But that's the way I thought. Yeah. Like, go smash something. But yes. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Not at all. But anyway, I'm done. Yeah. So and the thing... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, go uh, ahead. I don't know. Uh, go on, Tony. Go on, Tony. No, I was just going to say, uh, uh, I was just going to reiterate about what I meant about the phases in life when you live there. Like I said, mm-hmm. you think of a 21 to 30 English teacher. Okay, get by with $2,500 a month. Maybe you might get $3,000 if you're lucky. Or if you hustle more, you might get four. 30 on, at 30 to 45, now you got to be either working for an American company, which is the best option for you because they're going to pay you the most money. And they're also... They're also going to put you up. You're going to be better off as far as schedule wise. You're not going to be working like a dog. You could work for a Japanese company, but you're going to need to pass that A1 test. You're going to need Mm -hmm. to be fluent in Japanese. You're going to have to do that. The last part, over 45, you should pretty much be leaning toward not making any money in Japan, but bringing over your own income or have your own other income sources to set up set up shop in Japan. Okay. Um, Yeah. Yeah. This is. I'm going to talk about my little comment on this. So if you transfer into IT, 
which is what I did. So there's six areas. We had to talk about these six areas of actually, where you could actually uh, but, work in Japan. Yeah, uh, be, before we go, go ahead, FBO, um, let, let's uh, break okay. down uh, the stream. This is going well, so well, brothers. So I want to know how you dealt with your assets at home, particularly you, feel because Tony said that he, he told us what he did. But how did you do with all your oh. assets at home in the US? Did you put them in your parents' house and then go to Japan? Did you, uh, did you hire out okay. a garage? Speak on that, bro. Okay, mine was chaotic. Okay, so this is what happened for me. I I packed up bo certain boxes that I wanted sent to me in Japan. I put them over to the side. I told my parents, I want these boxes to be sent to me. I'm going to send you money. And then what happened is I went to Japan and I sent money to my parents for them to send me the boxes and they just went ahead and spent my money. <laughs> so all of... So I couldn't get my boxes at all. Then what happened was that my parents had a divorce um, and they sold the house. So all of my stuff, went, my personal stuff, actually went into storage. So then I had to keep on, I had to start paying for storage for there. This is ridiculous. And then I actually went to America finally uh, after I got married. And I was looking through my storage. And I was like, look at these boxes. These, these boxes are totally logically like organized. Like, like this is going to be perfect. This would be great for me to be in Japan. And then I remember these were my boxes that I had had that I asked <laughs> my parents to send to me. And they were, they were sitting there like, my God. So I went ahead and sent those boxes over to me. Uh, finally, that was five years later. I had them sent over. So then my, my storage actually stayed in America. Um, I have a whole story about that. Now, on the reverse side, just as a, a public word to that, when I came back to America, my stuff was put into storage from Japan, and I still have not gotten it. It's been now it's my eleventh year, and I still haven't. It's been in storage since that entire time. So, if you're going to be doing this, you're going to be, you know, at least from my point of view, you could be. You need to be mobile. So you might be yes. putting things in the storage. You're not going to be. You're not going to have cash flow for the United States, if, particularly if you're getting your money from Japan. So, you just need to say screw it in your parents' house in, or storage, someplace else, put it over there. You're not going to touch it for a while. You're going to reinvent yourself and do something new, get something cool over in Japan. And that's just the way it is. You got to say goodbye to stuff. Yes. Thanks yes, I threw bro. away so many things, brothers. I do so many things away in storage. It's credible. It's just crazy, man. I threw mm. away so much stuff. Thanks for that, brothers. Yeah. Shout out to Jay Takashi for the $5 super chat. He says, this is my dream come true. Just like that song, Our Time Has Come, Old School Soul, Tony and Theo, check out. Plus, also, thank you for helping out, bro. No no problem, brother. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the super chat, brother. Much appreciated. Brothers, feel okay. free to send through cash apps and super chats to support the channel. And, of course, please hit the like button to push out this video for the algorithm. So, this going on to my next part of this um, question, Theo and Tony. You mm -hmm. are in Japan. Can you, brothers, tell us where where in Japan should brothers teach English? Is it Tokyo? You said Kanagawa. Um, are there any other areas where you would have a great time teaching English and getting paid well? Because obviously you don't want to work a normal English job in some crappy place. You want to live in a place where you can have fun. Women are great. The vibes are great. Speak on that um, further, um, Theo, especially the Kanagawa part and, and any other parts as well. And Tony, chime in after Theo afterwards. Go on, Theo. Okay, so... There are a zillion jobs for teaching English in the Tokyo metropolitan area. <clears throat> and that includes Kanagawa. So that is the easiest place to get a job immediately. Now, of course, Osaka also has it. It's number two. In the countryside, you have to be a little bit more concerned about getting housing. So is there a guest house? Is there someplace? Because they can legally say that you cannot rent a place because you're a foreigner. I had it happen oh. to me many times. It's a part of life. You know, there's, believe me, there's sometimes I look at them and I say, yeah, it's good that we nicked you guys. But oh. <laughs> Hey, hey, please keep it PG. Keep it PG. Oh, my goodness. No, that's, that's, that's the way it was. I would just kind of look at them and like, you know, that's okay, but fine. You, 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 I, you discriminate against me. We nicked you. I got your girl. Okay, it's all fair. Right. So uh, anyway, um, so the countryside is where you can teach English and have a great time at it, but just that the pay is lower. So you're definitely going to get that minimum wage of uh, 2500 But the the bonus would be that you get to date your students who might be really hot in the countryside. So that would be something to go into. But see, then the next problem is, is that you're stuck as an English teacher in the countryside. 
So you really need to go to Tokyo in order to change your career. That's the best mm. place to change your career. So I'll give I'll let, I'll give the baton over to Tony for that one. No, no, he's right, guys. And, and, and once again, I'll bring out my experience when I was teaching over there. See, I started teaching when I was in the Air Force. I would teach. I'd go to college after work. And then I'd, after college, I'd go, you know, take class. And after class, I'd go teach all over. the. I, I was in Okinawa. I teach all over the island, right? So that's where I got my first taste of English teaching. When I got out, I moved back to the Seattle area. I went to grad school. But like I said, nobody's getting jobs. So I went back. So I actually taught for a small school in a place called Mieken in a city called Matsuzaka, which is famous for Matsuzaka beef. And I was shocked. I'm sure I've said this story before, but I was like, what the hell? Where's the big cities? I went to big cities, the big lights. I was actually supposed to go to Nagoya, which is between Osaka and Tokyo. Now, like Theo said, if you're teaching in the countryside, the pay is lower, but you do have an abundance of choices as far as females, as far as women are concerned. And if you get lucky, you can meet a woman who, whose father is an owner of a farm because in Japan, you can't buy a big lot unless you have a farming license. That's, see, that's the catch. If you're going to buy acreage, you need to have a farming lot. You can't just buy it just to buy it so you can see what the view looks like. you got to buy it under the, under the auspice that you're going to be putting a farm on there. That's, that's how they sell houses to you in the country. Now, it, so you're in there. You're in the small country, so you're limited. But then I moved to Osaka, which doesn't have as many jobs as Japan. I mean, as Tokyo, but they have a lot because you got Osaka, Kobe, Wakayama, Nara, Kyoto. You have the whole big area, Ishinomiya. You have the whole big area of available students. And so I would say it's really up there near Tokyo as far as getting yourself a job. And it's really easy to get. Fantastic. Thanks for that, brothers. Um, shout out to Conrad Grant for the £3.67 cash app. He says for support, uh, for to support the powerful community movement. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated. Shout out to Neil Gotti for the $4.99 super chat. He says back. Thank you, Neil Gotti. Much appreciated, brother. Um, hold on, brothers. A shout out to Neil Gotti again um, for the nine for the nine ninety nine dollar super chat. He says looking into Jet's program for teaching jobs in Japan. Um, is that the right thing they should do, brothers? Speak on that, Theo and Tony. No, not necessarily because really your pay is only three thousand dollars a month, and they look down on you teaching privates there. So you have to do it really under the cover, like under the table. And the government, this is a government program, so if you do work at another school, they will know it because you're paying taxes. So this isn't something you necessarily want to do. Plus, you really will be in the middle of nowhere. There's a big possibility, like, you're in a place that you can see this Milky Way really well because they, they barely have electricity out there. So do you really want to be out in the middle of nowhere? Um, I am glad I did not do the JET program. So my, my point on this one is, is like you guys are talking about like government programs don't want to do government program you want to do pure private schools and there's a zillion of them and you, you can there's like there's a there's an advertisement i use was tokyo classifieds i haven't used it in a long time now it's called metropolis i think um they always had advertisements on there japan times always had advertisements Pot. there's various guys in pot yeah there's ways you can actually look for the english teaching jobs and um, again, it's it's phenomenal. Like if you get in the right time, you can get a right good job, you'll be fine. Yeah, and also speaking on that English teaching too. So that's why you want to go private because then you can teach your own classes like on the side. So like when I was in the countryside, I was making my two hundred fifty thousand yen, two hundred twenty five dollars. But then I was making another hundred thousand yen teaching here and there. See, so you can do that. You have no limit on what you can do and what you can make when you're in that situation. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And you won't be penalized for having your own uh, teaching sessions apart from your job. You won't be no. penalized for that at all. Okay. Because a lot of Japanese, what they do, and this is how I made my money when I was in the Air Force, they paid me under the table. So I didn't pay yeah. taxes on nothing I was making. And they don't even <laughs> see people understand yeah. Japan, it's <laughs> illegal to be to do undercover. You know how in the US and UK they got these undercover people? In Japan, mm -hmm. undercover work is actually illegal. They, they can't send people in there sneaking and prying on you. So nobody's going to come looking. Now, if you're driving a Lamborghini in Japan and you're a foreigner, oh, yeah, you're going to alert the tax people because they're going to be like, well, wait a second, why are you driving a Lambo? But if you're making you know, your little money on the side, nobody's going to care. 
They're just getting the work. The work's just getting done. Okay, thanks for that, brothers. Um, so before I, I want to move on from this English uh, teaching section, but I've got one last question for brothers. Um, brothers, you know, Theo, uh, Tony, where you taught, um, how did a woman, how did the woman treat you there? You know, I know Kanagawa was a, a probably paradise for you, Theo, but I want to know more information, bro. Was it every day a woman would throw themselves at you? Was it, um, you know, every hour you're getting the looks, come and, come and do more? Break it down, Theo, and Tony as well. Can you uh, speak on your experience teaching Osaka and how the woman treated you? But well, you go first, Theo. Kanagawa. I, I would... I, I would I would say even in Tokyo, when I was in central Tokyo teaching, for the most part, the English teachers were the meat. Yeah. And um, the the students were the were the customers. So we were we were pretty much on sale. And I don't believe how many times women hit on me in classrooms. And I there's I didn't even understand it fully because I was thinking about how to teach English in my lesson program. And like I go back, like they were just giving me notes and stuff. Like meet me here, meet me there, let's go have oh. fun. And I, I just I didn't even understand it. Um, no, they were serious. They were like, yeah, we want to go out with you. And um, like they would say, you know, steaky. There's this one word, really handsome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I have all kinds of puns with this. So they would just say like, you're you're steaky, you're steaky. And I said, well, am I sushi as well? Um, uh -huh. I, I didn't understand. I didn't understand what was going on. Uh, I had uh -huh. so many, I had so many students saying that to me, and I was like, like they're like they're like they're, they're like they're trying to hit on you, they're, they're they're trying to take you out someplace, and the other one too is that in case you can't you can't figure it out, the the female student might make private sessions with you, and mm. then you only have her attention for like one hour. She's like, I'm right here, and then she like wear a mini skirt with a something low. She's like. I'm here. Like, I oh. want you to do me. Like, yeah, <laughs> this happened. This happened to all of my friends. So this is why another reason why if you're into Western women, you will not be in the Western women that long. I, I, like two or three weeks the most. Because the oh. Japanese girls will just take you out. Anyway, go ahead, Tony. No, no, feels right, brothers. Because here's the thing. I taught at the school. It was the biggest English school at the time, Nova. I mean, they had no, he yeah. has branches everywhere. Like, and it was like Ekimai Ryugaku, which means in front of every big station, right? So we, mm. you can learn. So I'm talking like if you go from Shinjuku to Shibuya, Shinjuku itself might have about four or five Nova schools in that one area or Shibuya. I taught in Osaka. So the big one was Namba Station, Shinsai Bashi, where the headquarters was at, you know, Homachi, you know, Minami had Nova everywhere, right? Kyoto, Nara, Kobe, beautiful cities. And what I used to love, man, is taking the train to go to work. Because, I mean, the commute, oh, oh, my goodness. The oh, smell, God. They smell good. They look good. And then here's the thing. When you get to class, you can teach. At Nova, had a program where you couldn't have no more than three students. So most of my students, guys, I, I was going to say something else, but I'm on IP's channel. It, 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 sound, it goes like, uh, you not. Most of my students were females between the ages of 18 and 25. And like Theo said, yep. they would sit there and compete with each other. I'd get there yep. and I'd sit down and then they said, Tony Sensei, and all of them would come to my class and they all be dressing nice and they smelling good, their hair is done. And then they'd go into the vacations and come back and bring me gifts. And then I had to deal with the staff. The staff was trying to hit on me. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a constant 24-7 yes. run, brothers. It's yes, the this is exactly, <laughs> yes. This is exactly correct. This is what I, my experience was as well. And I, I, I didn't fully understand it, but I would watch my other um, male English teacher friends, when particularly the Australians, they were gone. The English were hunted down. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how you can get that far away from the, you'd have this like <laughs> 19, 20 year old who would just had, would have like her eyes spread out for you and say, you are not going to get away from me. I'm going to be your girlfriend. And that yeah. would be it. Like you would, like you could run from her, but not that far. I mean, it would just be no. like, Okay, Theo, I, I give up. Did you tell Theo how you how you go home, right? And you'd be at the station. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one of your students just happened to show up. You're like, happened you to show up. From? Yeah. You, where, you, where, <laughs> yeah. You, what are you doing here? Oh, I, I was waiting for you. What, 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 what? Wait for me for what? Oh, let's go get a beer. Or let's go do this. Let's go to. Oh, wait. I got, and, yeah. and if you ain't getting on the train, you're not getting on the train that night. Because her apartment is close to that station. See? 
So you're oh, going to no. end up at that apartment. I have, I have memories now. You're bringing me back. 97, 98. Oh, my God. I'm young again. I don't believe I did this okay. stuff. I, so, I, I, how, how old were you oh, brothers? How, how old were you brothers um, when you were teaching English at first in Japan? Uh, how old were you, Tony? And how old were you, Theo? Oh, yeah. So when I was in the Air Force, I was in my 20s. But then when I went back to teach, I was in my early 30s. So it's like I taught there from like, I was there four years, so 32 to 36. They don't care how old you are. The girls could care less. All they know, and you know what, guys? And you know, Theo probably did the same thing. Brothers, we dress. We, we could dress and we always make sure our hygiene is clean, right? I just throw just a little, I was just literally, because Japanese don't want the cologne on you strong, right? It's light. So I just would spray and just walk into my cologne every day before I went to school. And I tell you, man, the women would be like, oh, you smell good. Once they, because Japanese, keep got to understand, Asians in general do not give compliments unless they're serious. They don't just throw compliments around like candy like they do in the UK and Brit. Oh, I like your shoes. Oh, your hair looks nice. No, they don't do that because they don't even compliment each other. But when they give you a compliment, they are serious. When they say you're handsome, you really are handsome to them. That's what you got to understand. Yeah. How old are you, Tony? Lizzie, this, I, How old do you feel? When you I was 24. I was 24 when I started, and I did not understand this. And I, <laughs> I didn't understand the degree to which women were hitting on me. Like, so I was in Kanagawa also, like, the, the second year that I was teaching in Kanagawa. And I was, I was at a university teaching. And I had my students say, well, I, I, we know that you're looking for a wife, Theo. So why don't you come over to our place and you can pretend that I'm your wife or you can pretend I'm, I, I, you can pretend that we're married. How's that? And I was like, what? Like, I, I, I just kept on going by lesson. And then I, I looked back and I was like, are you kidding me? She was 19 years old. I should have gone smash that. <laughs> huh, why yep. did I understand it? I, yep. I, I didn't understand it because I was like, there, that, that's, that's impossible. There's, there's no way a girl would say that in a classroom setting. She said it, another girl said it, another girl said it. They weren't joking. They no. wanted me to go take, go home and smash them. Dude, I, I was teaching a class in Gifu one time. I went to Nagoya, and then they had me teach at school. A company used to work for us. They would send me out. I remember teaching middle schoolers, man. I had them rolling because I, I was always a popular teacher there. And after a class, this 15-year-old girl, as I'm going to the train station, comes up with her friend, one of the students, and they asked me, she said, hey, can, can we go out and – I was like, and I'm thinking, you're only 15. I said, oh, no, I'm sorry. I see him. I said, no, 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 no. You, you, you're too young. You're too young. Wakai, wakai this, wakai this. You're too young, right? Wakasugi. Yeah, wakasugi mo. Yeah, wakasugi wakasimo. And then so she's like, no, 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 I don't care. I said, no, no, girl, you're only 15 years old. But they were even trying to pick you up. Even 17 years mm -hmm. on trains try to pick you up. You oh, know, and God. keep it yeah. well. Yes. And, and one thing about yeah. Japan, I just want to say, in Japan, every male in Japan wants to do a high school girl. I don't care what they say. High school <laughs> girls are all, the, every male looks at them like they are doable because you see their little scare things. The little porn is, has a girl, a 20 or 30 year old woman in a high school uniform. Every guy knows, and every high school girl knows that every guy wants to do them. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Teaching, but, yes. yeah. Yeah. That's entirely correct. I just want to comment on that a little bit more. So one of my English teacher friends I actually saw this in the, in the school. We were teaching the transition between high school to university. And I actually had to go to America. And um, we had a bunch of 18-year-olds in there. And one of, the, one of the teachers, he was single. I mean, I didn't think anything big. And a group of five girls came up to him and said, you don't have a girlfriend. Choose one of us. And I was oh, in there. God. I was like, okay, I... I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna. I don't want. I don't want to be around this one. Right. So, hey, no, they, they were serious. They were like, "You need a girlfriend. You should not be alone. Choose one of us." And so he chose one, and that was it. Like he was going crazy with her. That was. She was like, "Yes." She never said no to him. She just did anything she, he, he wanted. I was like, "Wow, this is incredible!" Like they just straight out hunted the guy. He had no choice. Like you, you're gonna date a Japanese girl. Yeah. Okay, this is great, brothers. This is like you have a great time as an English teacher to, to Japanese women. So moving on from this English teaching thing, right? So you're in Japan, you're, 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 in, you're in Japan, right? And then you've you've established yourself as an English teacher, but now you want to make more money. You want to expand your career. 
So, Theo, speak about these six areas that you should go into. And before you speak that, before you speak on that, Theo and Tony, shout out to uh, Neil Gotti for the four ninety nine dollars super chat. He mm-hmm. says, "Thank you, bro, for supporting the channel, brothers. Where, where's the support, brothers? Where's the cash app? Where's the super chat, brothers? Right? It's it's two thirty a.m. in the UK again." I'm giving you brothers classics <coughs> to live a great life in Japan. This is free information. Where's the support, brothers? So support the channel, like the video, cash up, super chat. It's much appreciated, brothers. Um, so yeah, Phil, uh, speak on those six areas. And Tony, can you chime in on that after Phil, please? Yes. Okay, so I recognize that um, there was a real limit to the amount of English, the money you can make as an English teacher. Um, if you killed yourself, work seven days a week, Maybe you could make just over five thousand dollars a month, but that was it. You're not going to make anything more than that, even as a university teacher. It's not going to happen. So I was like, "What do I do?" So I went into the first big area, which is uh, IT, and I got my certifications while I was there. It's cut for my seminars, but I actually had to get some how to get uh, sort of certified. So I did my certification uh, process while I was there. And I actually got a job in a bank, and that's how my career went. Now the other areas you can go uh, is recruiting. Um, there's a huge area for particularly international to recruit international people to international banks in Japan. Uh, so recruiting is one one. Next one is finance. There's a huge, huge area for fi- for foreigners to work in finance. Absolutely unbelievable. Like there's, that's just, it, that's real money. That's like more than I ever made. Um, then you have the, the official, like your artist, something like that, but we don't really count that because that money is unstable. Um, you could do that one. I'm trying to think of what, what, uh, if there's any others that are big. Uh, those, are just, those are the big ones that are, I, I regularly saw foreigners uh, working and making some really big money. Recruiting is actually rather lucrative. Um, if you are a decent recruiter, you can easily make twenty to $30,000 a month oh. and not have that much skill. Yeah, mm. you just have to have connections. Yeah, because mm. you get a commission depending on how big those salaries are. And so if you know, if you're well connected, which isn't hard to do there, you can get people placed, you can get Japanese people placed in the various, in various jobs, and then you can start making some money. Um, I went the IT route, because again, I like IT. Uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for IT. Uh, so um, it really matters what you're into. But again, the, the banks are there. They definitely need um, foreigners working for them. Not, not only the international banks, but also the Japanese banks themselves. So there's plenty of opportunities. Um, I actually work for a Japanese bank. I work for Mizuho Securities. That's one of the biggest securities firms in the in the world at the time. Uh, so um, I did IT security there. So again, that's my that's my spiel. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah. So what I did when I first got there, I was working for this this Japanese company, and I thought I was just going to be an English teaching a manager, right? Well, they actually had me going around doing demonstrations. So I was in that small uh, town in that, that prefecture, Mie prefecture, but then the headquarters of that company I was working with was in Owase, which is an even smaller town. But then, like I said, the guy would come up and pick me up and it's like six o'clock in the morning. And then we would venture out to say Kyoto, Osaka, Kobe, or Nara that day. And then we would come back and then I would turn around and have to teach that night till nine o'clock. So I had a lot of like 16 hour days for a year when I was in Japan. Mm-hmm. Now, what hurt me what what what, did, what what kept me from other industries was I had lived in that small town. Had I been hustling like that in, say, a Tokyo or Osaka, then I would have been able to venture into the finance world because that's where I needed to be. I needed to be in finance, like J.P. Morgan, Goldman mm-hmm. Sachs, these big investment firms over there. And you speak mm-hmm. Japanese fluently, you can sit down. You can they, they can use you as an investor there. That's where I was trying to get into. And bef- before I could get into it, I actually got a job somewhere else in another country. But yeah, that's that's that was my background. That's how how I did things there. Wow, um, this is crazy intel. Um, hold on, brothers. Shout out to Jay Bones for the two dollars super chat. He says, "IP end the stream." Uh, Team Asia gives me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jay Bones, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Yo, you like that fat girl up there on Facebook group they just put up, huh, J-Bo? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man. Shout out to um, uh, DK Polyglot. Can you, reach out, can you reply to your IG message, please, bro? I've been trying to get, reach out to you in Japan, but you're not replying to my messages, bro. So please reach out to me back. 
Much appreciated, brother. Shout out to Joe uh, Abundance, thanks, uh, Joe Abundance, right, for the nineteen ninety nine uh, dollar super chat. He says, "I'm self employed. If I want to stay indefinitely after my ninety days, no visa required stay, am I forced to take a job, or is there other options? How many hours a week minimum does a job have to be? Can someone speak on that?" Real yes, quick, please, uh, I could jump on that. There's a a guy that's actually in in, in my group, um, the blacks, um, my black successful and prosperous group. Um, his name is uh, uh, Donald Gray. He owns a, a lodge over in Miyoko. He actually bought this place for sixty thousand dollars. And in that video somewhere, he says that if you have a business license, you can get a visa in Japan to live there, a business like visa license to live in Japan. You don't have to be married, and you don't have to have a degree. You just have to have a business. And, and meaning you have, but you have to have a quota to where you need to hire Japanese to run, to be in that business. So if they know that you're going to be able to hire a Japanese person, they will grant you a visa. Now, granted, it's up to you when you hire them, but you need to be leading yourself in that direction. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you, brother. Shout out to uh, Deshaun uh, uh, Wilson for the $10 super chat. He says, thankful for all you guys. Much appreciated, brother. Thank you again, brother, for the super chat. It's much appreciated, brother. Thank you. Um, shout to uh Tokyo 64. What's up, Tony? Bro, thank you. Five dollar <laughs> super chat. He says, This is fun doing this up here. Feel yes, bro. You're much appreciated and you're much um respected on my channel. Both of you, thank you, brothers. Um, shout out to Jay Takashi for the five dollar super chat. He says, Tony and Feel are right. The high school girl cosplay type is the most uh desired. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> and how about we, we, we move from that part, please? I don't want anyone coming off my channel. Uh, mm -hmm. But thanks for thank you for the um, <laughs> super chat, brother. Much appreciated. Shout out to Kingo Ghidorah for the five dollars super chat. He says, "Sup, Theo, Tony, and of course IP." As a half, as a half few, believe what these brothers are telling you. Yeah, Kingo Ghidorah, DK Polly got calling, uh, and when you have the time, I know for a fact that uh, these brothers are speaking uh, facts. Shout out to Sigma Jones for the ten dollars super chat. He says, um, "Shout out to IP, Theo, and Tony." Tony, I have to get you uh, get with you behind the scenes for Black Women's discussion. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Sigma mm -hmm. Jones for the super chat. Much appreciated, brother. Shout out to Neil Gotti again. Hey, Neil Gotti, he's supporting mm -hmm. for the stream. Brothers, follow the brothers Neil Gotti's um, lead. He's, he's supporting four times now. Thank you, bro. Uh, for the $4.99 super chat. He says, this info, American brothers, for their jobs in Japan on usajobs.com. You just need a college degree or military service, but only USA citizens can apply. Speak on that. I got someone uh, that Dio. I got some deal. If I can cut on this, and the reason why I can say this because I was I was on USA jobs hot and heavy, man, for years. So I was on there from say 2005 to about 2000 and roughly 2009, trying to find well, to, yeah, 2009, trying to find me a job to move to Japan. But man, I wasn't getting any hits and. You know, the thing about that, too, is that the government limits you now. They didn't use to limit you, but now they limit you to five years in country. So you get there, you'd be there five years. You got to up and leave. So you may go from a nice life around Tokyo to, say, you know, Tuberville, North Carolina, somewhere where there's nothing but a bunch of super Walmarts and bad food. You need so so you got to you got to deal with that. I, I, I would go. I would lean going to work for the government because, you know, you don't know. When you're going to get the job, number one. And number two, you're not necessarily guaranteed to go to Japan. They can send you somewhere else. Yeah, I agree with this. And I would also say, stop thinking about government. Think about private sector. There's plenty of jobs. There's zillions of jobs in the private sector. Go there. Get Develop the skills to, in, in order to be able to be competitive and actually find jobs in, in Japan and Tokyo. There are zillions of them. They don't have enough people there. Actually, which sounds um, weird, but they don't have enough trained people, particularly what we can do. Um, so the jobs are there. Do not go in this way. Because I, yeah, you won't. You don't want to be pulled out like that. You just I, no, no, no. Anyway, I I relent. Continue. Uh, shout out to uh, measures up for the four nine ten dollar super chat. The travel vets, you know, they are bringing the heat. Yes, facts. Thank you again, both brothers, and thank you, Majors Up, for the super chat. All right, so moving on. So I still want to be. On, I still want to focus on this career path here. So uh, Theo has mentioned that IT. Um, I think he said um, recruitment, finance. 
Uh, there was you're missing three more, bro. Uh, uh, what, what else can brothers? What industries are good for brothers to work in? Cooking, 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 uh, modeling, modeling. Okay. You'd be surprised how many. Like what I would think a, a five is in 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 the West. She's a ten for some reason in Japan. She's a model. I'm like, how did you make it here as a model? Um, but they're there. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some others because the the finance one was the major one. Cooking though, you could definitely get a job as a cook there. And you could yeah. you could even get a job as a fisherman too in Japan. And um, you get paid yeah. well, right? You get paid well as a cook. You get decently. You get matters where you go. I yeah. knew a lot of like non-Westerners, like India, Pakistani, Turks. They were living pretty well. I mean, they're getting like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month uh, cooking food because their their food was good. You know? mm -hmm. The Japanese are massive foodies. Just like, yes. you know, they like their food. And they, they got like better the Michelin food. restaurants in Paris. I mean, in Tokyo than they do in Paris. They got better French restaurants yeah. in Tokyo than in Paris. That's okay. right. So exactly correct. On that point, brothers, right? Hold on, brothers. Shout out to Frank Harris for the £14.69 cash app. Thank you, bro, for supporting the channel for the cash app, brothers. The cash app is open 24-7. It's open right now. Feel free to donate to the channel for the cash app. Much appreciated, brothers. So, um, modeling, uh, Theo. Um, so, are you saying a black man can easily model in Japan and get paid a lot of money? You know, me, as a black man, go to Japan, get a modeling job, you know, and then get paid a lot of money, smash his Japanese chicks, have a good day. <laughs> Jackie, but modeling, speaking of that, bro, I don't know, especially for a black man modeling. I I had friends who actually were black and they were modeling and then they were also doing dramas. Mm. And they would appear on television. And uh, there's a process of actually how, how this works. But this they would get it every once in a while and then they would be in movies from time to time. And they mm. were really well paid and they got laid all the time. So um, I just want to say that is an opportunity. Usually the models are, are, are women, but men, black men can also do it. It matters how well you market yourself. Yeah, and, and the thing about the entertainment <coughs> industry is they got paid well, but keep in mind, they're not getting paid like U.S. entertainers get paid. Japanese entertainers, for the most part, don't make as much as you think. Like, you, you, like I looked up Matsumoto and those guys, the downtown, the tunnels. You'd be like, you're thinking they're worth like 100 million, two, 300 million dollars. And you look on their Google and they're only worth like 10, 11 million dollars. So they yeah. got to work really hard to get what they want to get. And, and, and Japanese, keep in mind too, Japan is a time country. So to them, it takes you years to perfect something. Like it takes 10 mm -hmm. years to them to become perfect in something. And even then, you're still an apprentice. Like, you know, weaving, basket weaving, whatever the case may be, art, especially in the art world, they want you to be mm. doing that for a long time before they value your your your, your presence. Damn. All right, thanks for that, brothers. Um, can we now then uh, speak about, so let's say, I think the best choice for brothers here when they leave the English teaching job is to go into IT. I just feel like it's good for brothers in general, like uh, Theo said, Tony also in IT as well. So in Japan, what particular type of IT should brothers do? I know there's software engineering, there's IT, uh, what field does, there's Cyber different security. things there. So what should they do in Japan and how should they grow their career in IT in Japan? What exams do they do? Blah, blah, blah. Let's speak on that in depth for brothers because I think that's very important, brothers. Don't okay. You brothers? Look, Let's thing do I it. You, you, you answer software, I'll do infrastructure. Okay, got you. So, so one thing I want to say about the software side. So I was in Japan. The last time I was in Japan was in 2013 when my son was born. And I met, I happened to meet a, a friend that my wife grew up with. He was a web designer. I met him at a restaurant function. His daughter had just been born and his wife and everything. And he was telling me that they don't get paid as much. The web designers don't get paid as much. The graphic designers, web designers, UX mm -hmm. designers don't get paid as much. If you want to get the money, you have to have that engineer attached to you. Basically, and, and, and Theo, and we, he knows this, you have to be a back-ender with strong front-end mm -hmm. skills. You have to be working under the, under the carpet, under the, under the weed, in the weeds to get paid some good money in Japan. And you also have to be cyber, too. If you're cyber, you're going to make more. The more secure you are and the more you can run things in the back to run that engine, the more money you're going to make. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I entirely agree with this. So I was the back-end. I was the guy who was doing things in, the, in like, compliance... Uh, security permissions, encryption, and making sure that applications can actually properly run. 
but I wasn't coding. So I was the guy who was actually thinking about the deliver, the secure delivery between the server to the browser. Um, the amount of money was absolutely huge. Now I did speak in Japanese, so that was my big <clears throat> help. Uh, I don't know how I would have gotten through it without Japanese, but I did do it. So my thing is that right now, your big question is what to do right now. Amazon, AWS, the cloud is huge. Yep, um, they don't idea. have enough. Yep. They don't have enough engineers. You have no idea how many times uh, Amazon from Japan finds me again on LinkedIn, and they're <laughs> like, "Please come back to Japan. We will give you like." They usually want to start me at a quarter million dollars a year, and I'm like, "That's yeah, too low." But they want they want me to come back there right right now and get it and do it. So they don't have enough guys who are doing basic cloud in Japan right now, and it's exploding. And this is also with Azure. And now the next one is Alibaba. I'm yeah. seeing Alibaba just come up, and it's, it's coming up with the Japanese companies as well. They're having some friction, but it's still going to be there. And they need these engineers, and they're just not enough. So that's, that's where you go in if you want to do from infrastructure. Yeah, they have, a, they have a shortage around the world of about 3.6 million engineers around the world. They can't get enough engineers out there. And see what Theo was saying, the speaking the Japanese really helps. Because here's the thing that you need to understand, and, and that's where my strengths lie as an engineer. I have, I, they always tell me, you have great communication skills. And the reason why you have to have good communication skills is because you have to know how to discuss that algorithm. An algorithm is basically a recipe. It's basically, if a customer comes to you and says, hey, I want to do this, I want to build this, you have to be able to Make that algorithm from A to Z. You have to let them know each stage. You have to know every stage of the game, what's going to happen. Like Theo was saying, and I use it, I do that, I still do that today. Permissions on the back end, you're going through Linux, Unix, making permissions on the back end. It's as simple as doing the triple seven, taking the triple seven to a 644. Then it's going to be safer, right? If you do a 640, mm -hmm. nobody's getting in there. Theo knows what I'm talking about with these numbers. Mm -hmm. But so basically, what I'm saying is speaking the Japanese, speaking the language is going to help because then you're able to communicate to the end user how the process is going to work. And then you're able to understand what it is that they want you to do. Because that's where the mix up comes in. As an engineer, if you don't understand what they want, and if they can't understand you, you're going to end up bringing out a bad deliverable, if you will. That's entirely correct. So they're kind of looking at you as being the foreign expert. Yes. And who are teaching the Japanese how to do it. And you would think it's the other way around. Like from the West, you think the Japanese are more ahead in IT. They're not. No. And so they're going to really think of you as being the high level guy who's going to teach them something new. And the big part is being able to communicate. So if you can communicate well, you get these small points and you're actually quite unreasonably, like I say, dedicated to detail because they're really in the detail. Yes. Um, at that point, the Japanese will like you and think you're God. And they just keep on giving you jobs. And that's what it was for me when I was on the good side in the good days. Um, so that's my, my big advice. Um, make sure you can communicate because they're always going to see you as being great. And know the pulse, like know where the market is going. So right now okay. it's cloud. Yep. It, it's, it's these mobile apps with the cloud. They don't have enough guys doing this. This was like, like I've seen basic uh, AWS jobs with like one certification starting at over a hundred thousand dollars a year in Tokyo. And that's like, you need to have at least 300 kanji basic Japanese in order to get that kind yeah. of job, but they, they want you to be the foreigner uh, because yeah. they have cloud implementations for foreign banks yeah. in Japan. They need, they need that guy to get in there. So yeah, the market's there. You just have to get the certification and go do it. And they get hacked a lot too. Yeah, they get hacked a lot. They get hacked right, a China. lot. Yeah. Because they're, 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 Japanese are very creative. They, they can come up with the idea. They definitely got the idea. Hey, I want to make this robot turn this way and turn that way. But when it comes to coding for that, that machine language, it, it, <laughs> it, it, they're not good. They're not strong at that at all. No. You know, they, you ask no. them to write some Python code, they look at you like, what's this? You know, they put, they're making, they don't understand it. The indentation is what makes a function. They don't understand that. They don't even know how to make a function in Python. They don't know nothing about variables. They know nothing about any of that. So, so, so a person like me could go over there and Theo, we can make some big money telling them, no, this is what you need to do. In fact, I actually thought about going over there and building my own business and teaching Japanese students how to do coding, so how, to, how to be an engineer. So that goes to my next point, brothers, right? So um, business-wise, so let's forget about being an employee. How easy is it to set up a business 
in Japan as a black man, get clients, get Japanese clients, um, make a lot of money for your business. Mm. How easy is that, uh, brothers? I, I, I didn't have a bad time um, setting up a business when I was in the Air Force. Like I said, setting up my English teaching business. I just put the word out there. Hey, I'm teaching English. And once you get one set of students and they like you, then they're going to talk. Japanese, they really don't need the Internet. They talk. That's how they get the things done. They, they spread the word. I mean, it's, it's a challenge to, to create a business, but all you need is the capital. Once you got the capital, you need, then you need somebody out there to talk for you. It's a lot easier to create a business if you're married to a Japanese because she has family members and they know friends and they know friends and they know friends. And before you know it, somebody says, oh, hey, he's doing this, he's doing that. Next you know they got it. You get in through the children, like, like the, the school age kids who need to learn stuff. That's how you start creating that kind of business if you want to, to teach a, a certain skill set. What about mm -hmm. an IT business? Speak on that field, an IT business in Japan. No, I, I created my own IT security company in Japan, and I had my own okay. employees. Um, I screwed up, and oh. I, my, company, my company almost went bankrupt, but I was, I was allowed to just return all the assets and give severance packages to my employees. I lost over a million dollars in the end in this process. Now, wow. it, it's, it's a good education. You know, failure is a great yes. – failure teaches you really well so my problem was that I didn't integrate better with um, uh, the Japanese vendors and the Japanese vendors should have been the front end and I should have been the back end helping out. That's actually where I was the best work in, in the Japanese companies, but I decided I wanted to be front end and that's where I got screwed over. And I never should have done that. I took too much risk at a too bad position. And it was just, I was, it was, I was being egotistical and saying that I was the man. I didn't want to be the man. I wanted to have other people be the man, and I give them value. Then I would have been protected. Um, so I learned that. I mean, I had to learn. I, when In failure in America, I looked back, and I was like, yeah, I screwed that one up. So my big thing was bringing over American technology and have it in, doing integrations uh, in the Japanese market. I was working on um, the language, like putting all the, the GUI front ends, making them all Japanese, making all the uh, textbooks and the the um, what is it? The documentation in the Japanese, the review, all of that. Mm -hmm. There was some. That was some pretty hardcore word work. And even in the code, um, we have the comments in the code. I, we were changing the Japanese so that the, yeah. the Jap new Japanese developers could actually read them. So that was that was some really actually to tell you the truth, there was some really good work that we did. Um, it's just that I had a bad business plan and um, I was thinking about my own glory, and I got hammered. And I, I never should have done that. So I understand. I made my mistake. Um, but I trained Japanese engineers who didn't know anything. Like I, my first engineer um, was my bike mechanic. Uh, he um, he knocked up his girlfriend. He came to me and he said, "I, I have, you know, I'm making like three thirty thousand dollars a year. I don't have many opportunities. My wife, my girlfriend is pregnant. I don't want her to to terminate. Um, please give me a job. I'll do anything." And I took him and I, I think I like, I was like 18 months, he was at a hundred thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, so he was my right hand man in the end. And he was getting a lot of things done. My, my wife also was one of my best employees and uh, she was a very good engineer, uh, security engineer. Um, but again, you have to work with the Japanese as well. Um, one of my good friends in Japan, he's American. He made his own company there. Took him a long time to get situated, but he did do it. Um, if anybody asks in the chat, did I have a business loan? No, I did not. I used my own cash. You don't really get access to business loans unless you're really hiring a lot of Japanese people. And that's a, like a really long process. If you make a company in Japan, you're doing it with your money. There's no, you're not doing it with debt, you're, unless you're debting it to yourself. Um, but anyway, those are my stories. Um, it's actually a little painful, but I mean, I, I'll, I'll say it to people so that they can learn and, and avoid the mistakes that I had. Yeah, you were so, with you. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was just going to spell on that. Um, Japan is all about relationships. And another thing about Japan is when you're running a business, Japan is not a get rich quick country. It's just not that kind of country. It's mostly working class people over middle class, working class, middle class. So even as a business, you, you, you won't see, you won't get that glory. And here's the thing is when the business fails, all the other people that work for that business are going to get their compensation. But the owner yep. usually ends up on the street homeless because they have nothing yeah. in the system for them. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's pretty much. 
I lost my house. I remember that. That was a hard day. I, oh. I lost my house, and there's nothing I could do about it. And I had to, to walk away from it. So um, the thing that, I mean, if, if Shigma Jones is still on here, one of the things that happened to me was that instead of, like, following Bushido, which is, like, the, the samurai right, culture, the samurai. which is yep. the way of working and having integrity and bringing develop, uh, enjoying the process and en enriching yourself via the process, enriching your culture, um, I changed it from that to me being the man, me getting rich quickly. And there are reasons why I did this. I understand it, but this really demented me and it changed my character. I never should have done that. What I should have done was just um, like done pure red pill on my wife and told her like, woman, this is the way it's gonna be. Uh, and I don't care what you say, but I allowed her to take very bad control of the marriage. And I, I did. Yeah, I did mistakes, but I was young. I was in love. What can I say? Yeah. Well, see, uh, it's so, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, um, say RP next time, Fio, just so you know, YouTube doesn't, you know, um, try the nonsense. Yeah. But um, uh, on on that note, Fio, right? When when you mean front end, is that you being um in the face of everything, the marketing posters? You is that what you mean by front end in your business? Is that what the problem was, Fio? You? you were more interested in fame and glory. I'm I'm the director. This is my face. Is that what you mean? Bro? So, for example, so the most of the vendors there already have established relationships with customers. Mm -hmm. So if I if I have relationships with the vendors, then the vendors will bring my service to other customers, and all I have to they'll they'll do all the sales for me, and mm -hmm. all I have to do is just keep on supporting the sales and making sure that the vendors look good. Instead of me doing that, I tried to get my own contract with the customers directly. And mm. that's a very long sales cycle. And I wasn't ready for it. And when we finally did get, make money, I had, I had huge contracts in the end. Um, when the 2008 recession happened, like one of my customers was Lehman Brothers. Well, I lost every single penny in relation oh. to, to Lehman. And uh, then all the other, like these companies are getting bailouts, right? Well, I mean, what's happening when the companies get the bailouts is that they're still firing people. So it's not just that like 20 people in, in an apartment were, were fired. The entire department was gone. So there's no way that I can recover. Even if I had like a 90% reduction in my, in my costs, I don't have a place to sell it. So I was screwed. And if I would have worked with the vendors, they could have given me more customers and kept me going in Japan. I didn't do it that way because leading up to that, I was being egotistical and thinking about myself and, and thinking about my own glory. And I don't know where that came from. And I, I kind of understand it, but it was just stupid. Um, I don't do that anymore. I learned my lesson. I'm like, God, that's mm, other people be in front. I'll be in the back. That's I'm good. I'm, I'm fine that way. Yeah. In Japan, they have a saying that the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. And, and the thing is this, and and, with, and and Theo is man enough to get up here and, and say that he made some mistakes. And you knew, I, I told you what my mistakes with the marriage world in Japan. That's mm. what it's going to come down to, brothers. We're up here because we don't want to see other brothers make those mistakes. But unfortunately, that's how you get seasoned in the country. Because you're looking at two <laughs> men on this platform that have mm. over 24, together, Theo and I have over 24 years of experience in Japan. Maybe 25 if you're traveling back and forth to, between the two of us. Right. So mm -hmm. you need to go through those bumps and bruises. It sometimes it's not expensive. Sometimes it's very expensive. Sometimes you, mm -hmm. you won't lose a wife. Sometimes you will lose a wife. But you have to go through those. I mean, you don't have to go through them. But unfortunately, a lot of us do before we finally figure out the system. The thing is this. Never give up on that, though. Never give up on your dream. Never give up on what you want to do. If Japan, like for me, Japan is, is me. That's since I was six years old. I've always wanted to be in Japan affiliated with Japanese. And I never gave up on that. So that's why so, I'm where I am today. So um lovely to hear that you're you're both successful brothers in, in 2021. I love hearing that. Uh so Theo, um, how did you get your first uh client and contract? How hard was that in Japan to get that first client contract? Was it through a connection? Was it through a family? Speak on that for you, because you're you're a foreigner in your business. It's not easy, you know. You're you're different from Japanese people. How did that happen for you, Phil? Uh, word of mouth. 
uh, connections and under the table deals. Okay. You got to be pure gray. They're gray, 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 gray. Nothing black and white. Gray, 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 gray. You got to be willing to do some things in order to get it. That's why I got my big ones. I, oh, okay, so I being ruthless. Kind of stuff. You know, being ruthless, you know, that stuff. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, you mean, but you might be telling someone, like, I'll give you 5% on the back end or I'll give you 10%. And then they understand that's what that's what's going to take. That they'll, they'll get that from the commission. I had that kind of those kind of deals going all over the place. And um, then I'd have uh, some of my money being sent offshore. And then I would send that out to different accounts as necessary offshore. So I was willing to be rather shady in order to do this practices. That's another dimension, like a demented aspect. Uh, but I wasn't the only one doing that. I mean, I was, it was, I learned from other people how to do it. So I was just applying it myself. I would never do that again now. Uh, but that's what I did. Cause it just, it's hard to get in this, in the sales cycle. Now, see if I had just, when I looked in hindsight, my easiest contracts were the ones with the vendors. Like if I just kept on supporting the vendors, it was almost always uh, guaranteed cash. Mm. So why didn't I just focus on that? Because then I could have just done a process and we could have just made the money and it would have been that hard and we could have sat back and enjoyed it that I could have hired a lot more people. I didn't do that. I had great ideas. I failed. And that's just because I lost sight of the real goal and I had myself as being the the center. And that was... mm, I screwed up. That's what it was. Don't worry, Phil. You know, um, happy to see you in a better position right now. So I've got a couple of super chats, and I've got I've got a few more questions on the whole career aspects. But hold on, brothers. Shout out to Dante going off for the five dollars super chat. He says, "What's up, family? The heavy hitter, I, the heavy hitters are in the house. What's up, Dante? Going off. How you doing, brother? Hope you keep well and safe, bro. Um, shout out to sorry, brothers. Let me get through these comments. Ugh. Okay. Um, damn, there's a lot of comments here. Uh, sorry brothers sorry brothers shout out to um ad for the ten dollar super chat he says life changing info right here thanks fellas so let me read these um hiragana there that's ah um i don't know that one that's ka that one Ari. there Ari. 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 Um, Ari. Ga. Ga. arigato yeah arigato. Arigato. yeah arigato okay all right ah i see Ari. Ah, okay. Thanks for that, brothers. Um, scrolling down forward. Um, sorry, brothers. Sorry, brothers. Sorry, brothers. <laughs> okay. Um, shout out to Trent's five for the five dollar super chat. He says, "Where's the best place to get training for cloud or what? The 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 did you or Alibaba? Any boot camp you recommend?" Phil has a conference actually in um December. I strongly suggest you brothers yeah. go to the conference. Uh, Phil, let me know. When you want to start putting that on my Facebook group, and I'll, I'll, I'll hope sure. That for you. So let me go ahead and answer that. The best place right now, I mean, besides, okay, I'm training, I'm training people on this, but I'm not the only one doing this. Um, the best place is Udemy.com, and then also with AWS Azure, uh, GCP, or Alibaba themselves, they actually have some training courses. But I'll, uh, Udemy is a game changer. I can't believe yeah. how many books I they have Udemy. on there. Yeah, I use Udemy all the time. And then yep. after that, you have you have your books on Kindle that you can just download. It's almost too yep. easy. And then you have YouTube as well. I'm just like, like what I went through when, for me to get an IT was gruesome compared to what people go through now. It's like it's like it's like mochi, man. It's like not even work. It's just easy. So mm-hmm. I mean, you could definitely take advantage of it. Um, again, um, Udemy. Yep, there he goes. That's what you want to do. So you want to start training right there. And the courses are ridiculously cheap. Yeah. In nice fact, I'm up. using Udemy right now. I'm, I got an AWS uh, dev cert exam I'm taking the next month. And I'm using Udemy to take the practice exams. Uh, and they're coming back mm-hmm. and they're very detailed. They let you know what you got wrong, explain to you the process. They don't just say you got this right and you got that wrong. They explain to you what, why you got it right and right, why you got it wrong. Thank you, brothers. Shout out to uh, Darius Harper for the $2 super chat. Will, will Japan trip uh, on not having a college degree for IT? Uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what he says. I don't know what he's saying there. What? Uh, I don't know what Japan... he's saying. In, in, order, in order to work in IT, do you need to have a computer science degree? And no, you don't. You need to have a pulse. And yes. you need to have your certifications. 
and yes, you need to be assertive and actually go out and actually talk. Then they'll hire you in a second. Um, mm-hmm. it, don't stop. Don't think about it in terms of the West. You really think about, well, well, you're not there. So fine. It's a fair question. They will hire you, but just make sure you're not a jerk. That's one of the big yeah. things I, I learned is like your personality, even if you don't know it, if you've got a really good personality, you can communicate and you're willing to work you. with other people. They'll be with you, and then they're like, well, we don't want you to fail, so they'll give you their job, and they'll teach it to you there if they really need to. That's what happened to me all the time. Uh, you said pulse. Uh, what's pulse? No, he mean a pulse. You just got to be breathing. Oh, oh pulse. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, shout, out Darius, shout out to Darius Harper for the super chat. Uh, shout out to Mike M for the $10 super chat. He says, as a faithful member of Hashtag Team Asia, <laughs> is it wise to gain skills in cybersecurity? and full stack web development to open up more doors in IT. Speak on that, brother. Yeah, so actually I'm a software engineer, but I'm also considered a full stack developer. Now keep in mind a full stack developer is different from a full stack web developer. See, here's the thing that you need to know first. When I when I got in the IT business, I went to the library first thing and I got me a book called IT for Dummies. And, and at that time, this is in 2010, right before I went back to school for this, there were nine sections of IT that I can go to. And they told you what they would be doing, what a typical day would be like. I, being being just recently, just you know newly married, did not want to work in the IT department that had to be on call or that worked 24 hours a day, like security. Security will have you doing that. If you go to anything security, you can best believe Saturday morning while you eat breakfast, you're going to get that call if something breaks. So I chose the the web world, but and the API world because I know that that's a nine to five happy hour after work weekend off holiday off kind of position. And now that position is starting to pay a lot of money now. So that's you have to look at it. You have to get to know the positions first. Get to know what IT means first. It's not just help that's not just fixing. Get to know what IT is about and then choose your path. That's how you have to do it. Thanks for that, brother. Um, shout out to Sean M for the $5 super chat. He says, get the likes up and support the channel, brothers. This is intel that you can't get anywhere else. Facts, brothers. So, brothers, hit the like button. Super chat, uh, cash app is also open as well. Cash app preferred, you know, as super chats, YouTube takes 30% cut of all super chats that I get. Cash app doesn't, so feel free to cash up as a first choice. If you can't cash up, super chats are greatly appreciated, brothers. Thank you. I've got a couple more super chats, uh, brothers. Sorry about this. Um, let's see. No, I think that's it. So next question is uh, for you, Antonio. So, you're working in a Japanese, in a, an American or Japanese company, right? Um, can you please tell us how you can get a massive pay rise? Do you, do you request it personally? You know, I'm working hard. I deserve a 50% pay rise. Bump my salary up from <laughs> a year yeah, to um, 110K a year. Is it that easy in Japan? Or do you have to you know, do a lot of courses uh, and exams to actually get that high pay rise? Speak on that, brother. The first question. The second one is... Can you please break down the difference between Japanese and American companies and how bad Japanese companies are to work for? But first question is uh, increase. <laughs> salary increase. You, first. you first, Tony. You, okay, you, Tony. Okay. So, so I, I, I don't have the experience that, that Theo has of working in IT in Japan, but I do know the difference between working for a Japanese company and an American company. The Japanese company, they're not going to pay you as much. They're going to demand more. And they're not going to, the work life balance will not be nowhere near as good as, as you work for an American company. Trust me on that one. Now, if they need, if you're in a position where they really need you, like Theo was in, then they're going to accommodate your needs. As far as what you're going to get compensated for, I honestly believe that Japanese compensate you well if you were like a Westerner coming in with skills that they really, that are in high demand in Japan. They're going to compensate you well because they know that you can go somewhere else. I can just keep going across. Puddle jump to China or Singapore or Korea or anywhere else that I want to go. Why am I going to stay here and make this little money in Tokyo when I go to Seoul and make twice as much? So they know that. So they will compensate you. Now, Theo will have a lot more information on how you get the raises in Japan. I know I, I haven't, I don't have that experience. I know that they would just tell me when I was teaching, hey, we're going to give you this much more every month. I know how it works in the US, but in, in Japan, it's different. So the way I did it, when I got my, my foot first in the door, it was October uh, 1999. I was making $1,000 a month, which was actually illegal. 
So what I got was I was a, a officially paid uh, 2500 and I had to give part of my wage to somebody else in order to make sure I get that job. Uh, that, that's totally great. I didn't care. I was so happy to get that job. Um, you know, within, so from October 99, I was at 1000 And then February 2002, I was at $10,000 a month. The way that I did it was certifications. <clears throat> what I would do is cert, cert as hard as I could, make sure I knew what I was doing, and then go interview someplace else. I was leaving my job every six months. And then when I got the CISSP, which is Certified Information System Security Professional, I was the fifth, I was the fifth person in Japan and the first foreigner to get it. Um, when I got that, I went from 85000 to 120000 uh, a year. And it, I just had to be a, a really aggressive person. Uh, I had no loyalty, total mercenary, did not care what it took for me to be successful. That's exactly what I did. And um, I'm glad I was kind of ruthless about that. So what you want to do is just leave the company and go someplace else. You don't say like, I, I have these skills, you have to pay me more. It's more like um, you, you, you've got to just go on the streets and say, hey, guys, I got these skills. Who's going to take me? And somebody else will come up and take you. So you say, bye, bye, boo, and go leave you know what? someplace else. The, I'm sorry, the deal's right. It, it, so it is the same in the States because the rule of thumb is this. If you've been working somewhere for two years, you're already, over two years, you're losing money already. The biggest pay yeah. raise you could get is by going to another company and showcasing your skills to them. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I, I've done it a lot. I've gone from a company A to company B and got 15, 20% pay raise each time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's how you have to do it because your company that you're at, they're going to see you got the skills. They know that you're on your way out the door because they know they don't. They no longer can afford you. That's how it really right. is. And you got yeah, to be that's brutal. Yeah, that's how it really is. You have to be absolutely brutal. So you want it. Well, and again, in my field, you want to be able to get that cert and get another cert. So I got the CISSP. Then after that, I got um, CISA, which is Certified Information Systems Auditor. And then I got the Certified Information Security Manager. And that was considered at that time to be the holy grail. And with an IT infrastructure and compliance. And then I focused on uh, uh, Japan's personal information protection law and the PIP. And um, then compliance in relationship with that with uh, JSOX, which is Sarbanes Oxley, and then how to make compliance systems to that. Uh, this was, again, this is like this it's like a pulse. You have to keep on always be on this. Like, what's the, what's the market want right now? How do I move myself? Like how do how do I anticipate where the market's going to go? And so you're, I was constantly studying, constantly working, and that never really went away. I, I, but I went from again one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to a quarter million dollars a year in four years. So there was always money. And then I was doing side projects. I had my own company, and from there I started making between thirty and forty thousand dollars a month. That's when I was like thirty one, between thirty one and thirty three years old. Um, that's a very aggressive level of doing things. And that's what yes. I was. I was relentless. Um, oh, well, you know, I have my failures, but man, my successes were spectacular. And mm. it's, it's hard work, fellas. And, and, and what we're trying to bring at this point, Theo and I are trying to bring up here, guys, is when you go to Japan, man, you got to bring it. You got to be willing to get down. I'm talking, I always say this to people, when you, if you're playing football on the field, you got to be willing to bite somebody's nose off to get in that end zone. That's how, that's the mentality you have to have. I got that mentality. Theo has that mentality. It ain't no joke. You can't, ain't no, there's no, Japan is not for the weak at heart, fellas. We hate to bring mm -hmm. it to you live like this. It is not for the weak at heart. If you want to get that, that life, if you want to make that money, if you want that good life, mm -hmm. you want that Jap, that pregnant Japanese woman in your bed, you got to bring mm -hmm. it. You got to bring it hard, brothers. You got wow. to bring it real hard. And I, I remember this, my first two months when I was in Japan, I was again, English teaching and there were problems that, at the English school and I got less pay. And uh, this resulted in me actually being hungry. I mean, I was really starving. And I remember that thinking, I was like, there's no way that I should be starving with a master's degree. And I was looking at these guys with the holiday visas from Australia and they had like six, $7,000 a month. And I said, that's it. I'm going pure mercenary mode. And that's what I did. From then on, it was hardcore. Just straight out, where can I get work? How much money can I get? When can I get it? With that money, what do I do with it to advance my career? And it had to be serious, like all the time. And because of that, again, my wages just went up all the time. Now, here's the thing yeah. I want to add on to that. I'm sorry, IP. I want to add one more thing on that, too. Those Australians, because I know one, 
I know a lot of them, but I know one that just left Japan about three or four years ago. He's in Australia. Now he wants to go back, get his wife and two kids from Japan. Here's the thing. You get stuck in that English teaching mentality where you're making that extra coin, you're making the six, seven thousand dollars a year. But guess what? Or six hundred thousand a month. But guess what? That is not a good long term way to do things because that mm. money will eventually dry up. You're going to have to take the approach that Theo took. You're going to have because Japanese, I said, it's all about a licensed country. It's all about certifications. You get that cert. You don't even have to know as much about the cert yet, but you got the paper. Guess what? The check mm -hmm. is coming with that paper. That's how That's it has right. to work. That's the way it has to work. You have to be very aggressive and you have to say like, I got this cert and now I can get to talking to HR. I can get the hiring manager and more likely than not, they'll hire me even if I'm not perfect for the job because I've got the cert. And then you have to get to go in there and work and be thinking about your next cert that you're going to get and what and other skills you can acquire while you're doing this. You have to be very ferocious. I mean, hungry all the time. You cannot, you cannot sit back and say, well, I'm just going to sit and just only do this and I'm going to allow the sun to come out. I'm like, okay, you could take a one day vacation. Okay. That's it. You get a Monday, get a Monday off. We understand you, get, you take three day vacation and then you're going right back to work on Tuesday and you're going to go get it. If not, why are you in Japan? Because the wow. Japanese are going to be like, like we, we don't need you. Like you're the foreigner. So we could just, if you're going to be lazy, we got plenty of lazy Japanese people here. So mm -hmm. why do we need you? You yeah. have to understand that about the culture. I mean, you're going to be working. But the yeah. benefits are, like, if I look at how much I work here. Like I've told you this on the stream. I make huge money. I'm not dating any of the women. They could be walking down the street naked right now. I don't care. I'm not going to date them. They're horrible. Whereas mm -hmm. in Japan, you see honey after honey who's totally worth it. Like, yep. you're like, oh, yeah, I'll work for you. Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're worth it. I mean, I'll get you on my program. Oh, you're, you're, ooh, you're good. Oh, yeah. Ooh, you're, you're good. Brothers, it's, it's nothing better, man. Every minute, morning I wake up and I look across right next to me and I see that pregnant Japanese woman in my bed. There's nothing better feeling than that, brothers. Trust me, <laughs> nothing better than that. I'm serious, man. It is. And, and that's what I'm saying. But that all comes from hard work. Theo and I, man, we talk about this all the time whenever we chop it up. We're not up here to blow smoke, man, up anybody. We we are telling you it's hardcore, brothers. It's a long road. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But when you get to that pinnacle, it's going to be so well worth it because then Japan is like a moss country. It's like you slowly build this up. Just imagine a, a big sheet and you pouring honey on it. The honey's going to flow slow, but it's going to eventually cover that entire sheet. Not like if you be a painter and you're just splashing stuff on it. You might go up and down here and there, mostly down, mostly off the sheet. No. You take that honey approach and you build slowly and you let it go all across the sheet. When it fills that sheet, you will never come down, ever, because you build yeah. that point. On that yeah. note, brothers, yeah. um, um, question, two questions for you now, brothers. Uh, brothers, feel free to cash up and, of course, feel free to super chat to support the messages that we are pushing on this channel. You won't get this anywhere else, brothers, so please support the channel, cash up, super chat, and like the video as well if you don't like it. So, Theo and Tony, right, um, I've got two questions now. Can you please speak about taxes in Japan? So, if I'm earning mm. $150 in Japan or over 100 k how much would I get taxed? Are taxes high in Japan? And can we speak about um, health care? Can we speak about dental care? All the things that actually matter, you know, in this world. Because in the UK, all that health care is free. You pay for dental care, but you get high tax here. What's the, uh, what's the tax rate like in Japan? What's the health care like in Japan? And what's the, um, you know, dental care, you know, pensions? How's it all broken down in Japan? That's the first part of the question. And I've got, I got a question for you specifically, Tony, as well, second question. How are you able to study so hard and balance Japanese women? But that's the second question. Answer <laughs> the first question first, please, brothers. Starting with Tony first. Okay. Oh, go, go for your, go. Well, actually, no, I mean, I, I own my own company, so I actually had to be aware of the taxation policies and how this works. And then if you're making, like, big money, if you're making over $50,000 a year, you need to be aware of taxation. So you're not really getting into a penalized area of, of paying taxes until you make uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year. That's Nissan month. Uh, yep. Below that, you're you're barely paying any taxes. So you're okay. This is basically it's you're just taking a twenty percent deduction, 
And part of that is, oh, help me, Tony, with this. Okay, so I think it's 4% pension and 4% yes. the company pays pension. And then mm -hmm. I think it's 8% for the healthcare. Yeah, it, like it's that. Really, yeah, it's really cheap. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, and ticket. Okay. Is that 8% taken from then your salary? It's 8% taken from your salary. Yes. For healthcare. And then, okay. Yeah, and then it's six percent or a little bit more than that. Not that I'm much. I'm looking it up now. Your, I'm looking it up now. Yeah, for your income tax. So you're basically saying that your your taxes are going to be if you're a single, uh, your taxes going to be twenty percent. Now I had experience where there actually was a kid around, and when I had the kid around, uh, my taxes went down to fifteen uh, percent. Okay. Like no, I mean my total deduction went down to fifteen percent. They like if you have a kid, they 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 really want you to have the money. Um, so that's my little spiel. It's not like it's not like the UK. You guys get hammered there. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just it's a it's a horrible I mean, experience. You're like you're like you're making fifty thousand quid a month. I mean a year, fifty thousand quid a year. Okay, we're gonna tax you to death. And I'm like, what? But that's the way it is. Like they just go after you. If you go me a hundred thousand pound. You're in trouble. Whereas in Japan, you're, it's like smooth sailing. It just keep mm -hmm. on. You're just like kind of just keep on making the money, and then you do so many under the table deals anyway. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> and the good thing about Japan too is, is, is it's like you just they, they you don't have to fill out a tax form. They just automatically taking the taxes away from you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. They just take exactly. the taxes out. No, so basically, no, you be forty. You're, you're saying if you're earning a hundred k in Japan. You can expect them to take away five percent of taxes just for your salary only five percent, six percent, seven percent. That low. I, I'm looking Whoa. at it. That, that's a breakdown. It's actually twenty percent. Twenty percent. Is this a flat tax in Japan? 20. Yes, it's twenty percent for everything. So, like, th think of it like this: if you're making ten thousand dollars a month, which is like Yakuman, you're going to get eight thousand dollars a month where this uh, take on Hachiju money. Yeah. Uh, per and that, that's it. You're always gonna have that eight thousand dollars per month, and then you'll get a bonus, and it's pretty much the same way. In fact, you actually pay less with the bonus. I think you don't pay uh, health care with the bonus. Uh, so it's pretty lucrative. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's it's pretty easy system for the taxation. Um, you'll do very well. That's why I want to say, like a lot of the British over there, they love the taxation system. They're like, we don't want to go back because mm. you guys get. You guys get man, it's great for you. Ooh. But here's the thing. But here's the much. thing about Japan with taxes, though. It like for me who who would live in Japan, and if I'm making money from another country, they will tax your income coming in from another country if it's considered income. That's why my plan is when I'm when I spend the time I'm there. It see as long as you you don't take up residence more than a year at a time, you're good. But if you actually live in there permanently. The money that you're bringing in, if it's income, that's taxable. If it's non-income, like dividends and stock options and retirement money, it's not taxable. So if you're earning uh, 200K in America, they will still tax you 20% of that 200K, even though yes. it's external. That's not even yes. bad, to be honest. It, oh, oh, man. But you're still yeah. getting paid tax in the States, too, though, in that money. Oh, yeah, you're still paying tax in the States, too. Double. So what you would do then is you would have you like, let's say like you have 200,000 a year in the United States. You just put that into your account and then that's in your debit card, right? So then you just don't declare that to the Japanese government. Yes. And then you exactly. just use your debit card. Nobody's going to look at you in the no. same way. <laughs> this is bad, but okay. So if you're getting paid the money in Japan, you just don't declare that to the American government either. Because yeah, exactly. the, the American government is just really bad. They tax their citizens even they're abroad. Like what? Like this? Yeah. You got to talk about a mafia. This that's some mafia crap. So yeah. you just say, okay, I make no money in Japan, and there's no way they can collect that information. So you're like, yeah. come get me. What are you gonna do? Like, yeah. what are you gonna say? I don't have any money. You have no evidence of it. Uh, so that's the easiest way of doing that one. Just you separate the income streams, and then you just don't tell the governments about it. You're fine. Yeah, and that's not a plan. I mean, if I, if I had to, I would do the same thing. I mean, I have a house in Japan, so once we get, if we want to stay in our house, they don't have to know nothing. All I need to know is I'm just making a living. That's it. They don't have to know anything. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, brother. Yeah. The second question for you, Phil. Hold on, bro. Let me just read out the super chat. Shout out to uh, Dimitri Clark for the five dollars super chat. He says, "Newcomer to the channel, soaking up all the game." Welcome, Dimitri Clark, bro. Uh, can you please tell us how you found my channel and how you came across my channel in the first place? 
And what was the first video you watched? Thank you, bro. Um, next super chat I have is from uh, legendary Conrad Grant. What's up, Conrad Grant? He's donated five dollars. Thank you, bro. He said, um, "Big ups to IP for your Tony. You guys continue educate brothers and sharing your experience, which in turn will help brothers in growing and expanding." Facts. Thank you, brother. Much appreciated, bro. Uh, sorry, brothers. Um, so, um, shout out to Attic uh, Atticus for the four nine seven dollar super chat. New to the channel. This is great stuff. Another new brother. Welcome, bro. Welcome aboard to the channel. Uh, how, did you, how did you find this channel, bro? And um, what was the first video you watched, bro? Let us know in the comments. And welcome aboard to the International Passport Movement. Theo, you are a very um, studious man. I've noticed that. And how do you balance studying and dealing with so many Japanese women? This is crazy. Like, how do you have that um, dedication and focus? Do you have, like, a, a fixed schedule? So Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, study only. Forget about texting or dealing with Japanese women. Thursday, Fridays, do okay. Japanese women. Study Sunday, study, study, study. Speak on that, bro. Um, <laughs> you just go outside and look at the Japanese women, and you had all the incentive that you needed, yep. like that. You're like, oh yeah, I'll, like what do I need to do in order to uh, in order to get one of those chicks? Like what? Do I, I, I like if I were in Japan right now, I would be I would be like a super master of Japanese. I'm I'm pretty good at it, but I would be like at four to five thousand kanji at least. I would be going nuts over these Japanese women. Um, cause they're, they're just so beautiful. They're so wonderful. So you just can't help yourself. You're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to study. I, like, so like, let's say that, uh, Junko, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have a date with Junko tonight at eight o'clock. And then while you're at work, you're working, but then you're also studying Japanese at the same time. And you're also studying for your materials for that you need to do. And you're just, you're on it. There's no rest for you at all. You're not playing mm. video games. You're not doing something stupid. You're not wasting your time. If you're on the train, like I was all the time, um, you're studying on the train. That no one's going to take your stuff. You're studying. You're going on there. You're you're always doing something. There is no downtime, and that's because the woman that you're going to meet that on that Monday night is going to be better than any woman you ever dated in your own country. Wow. Like straight out. Even the girls you see, like the girls you thought oh, I could have gotten her or I, I should have gotten her. That, that first Junko, that first Japanese girl, is going to blow that any kind of Western chick away. And then there's going to be Yuko, there's going to be Keiko. They, they keep Sachiko, Sachan. They, they just keep on multiplying. There's more of them. And you're like, I can't <laughs> help myself. I, I will study. I will study day and night. You got it. What, what is that? Yes. See? Kanji? Yes. See, I was studying this kanji every day. I write it in my book. This is from Japan. This is a book I have from Japan. I wow. have my little book. Japanese like the, these kind of like books like this, like these, they buy these, they give you them as gifts and you buy them. They're like diaries, but you actually put all your, like I would write all my kanji in here that I was studying each day. And that's how I learned how to speak, read kanji too, besides college. So Theo's right. And you, and you have to manage your time. You just manage your time better. Yeah, Sounds you're sweet. not going to be watching something stupid. I just want to straight up. Because let's, let's go ahead, I'm going to say this on point before you do the shout out. Sorry. Okay, so most of Japanese television really isn't so fun. I mean, if you get really good at Japanese, it's a little more interesting, but most of it's really stupid. And then you don't have access to Western television. So you're cut off from television. That's it. And you don't know how much time you waste on the television. So you're actually like out studying, riding your bike, uh, being active, studying kanji. You're just like, you're going at it because. When you go between your house to the station, you will see more beautiful women than you ever saw in your entire life. And that's just going to the station. And then you have your, you get on the, you get on the train and you go to like, you know, like say you're going to go to Shinjuku. There's like eight stations from your, from your air station to eight. Each one of them have a horde of wonderfully beautiful women. And it gets better and better as you go. You're like, heck yeah, I'm going to study. Yeah, no problem. Yep. No, I'm gone. I, I so, forget everything. You're saying, Phil, uh, the beautiful woman motivated you to study harder. So you're saying, bro, that Japanese women won't even check for you if you're a bum. If you're someone that owns that earns low money, even though you're a foreigner, they're checking for you. You know, is that what you're saying, Phil? I'm, I'm, I'm sure they, they would check it for you, even though they make more money than you, right? Uh, speak on that, bro. Uh, or, no, or no, they they, hmm. they might date you, but they're not gonna let you smash. And then you're kind of like a little, like in a way, like a trinket. 
and you don't want to be in that position. You're going to lose frame real hardcore because they're going to assume that you're a Westerner, so you're doing a better off than her. So that's why you need to really start focusing on that. And not only that, you want to do better, and you have the opportunity to do better there. So why, you're in why Japan. Why not? You live yeah. in Japan. And you hear Japanese yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Do you have to tell her and, that your do you have to tell her your own salary directly? I, I earn two hundred K. Yeah. Why why does she have to know your own salary? Do you have to tell her? Or will she no. know from how you walk what you what you wear that you're a high value rich man? Because why would you tell her how much money you make directly? Is that so is that common for you and Tony? Telling her how much money I, you I've make? never she told can, a Japanese woman how much I made. She no. can figure it out because yep. like if you could easily pay for, for food and then you have mm-hmm. no problem with, with expenses and you've got yep. money in your wallet and stuff like that. She knows what's up. She knows what's going yep. on. And um, what's good about Japanese yeah. is that when you're spending money, they start it's like it's like imagine them as a stone, right? Not that you have to spend money on them, but it makes it quicker to chop that chisel, to chisel that stone off that body. Right. So you're taking them out, you could chisel and they get more comfortable and more comfortable and more comfortable. And you're speaking in Japanese. And then next, you know, you got them eating out of your hand. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. bro. Yeah. This is great. So far, brothers. Um, shout out to uh, Mel for the one Einstein dollar super chat. He says, do Japanese women care about looks and stature? Uh, let's, this is coming on later in, in the stream, bro. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll answer later on, bro. But touching it very briefly, Theo and Tony, very briefly. Do they care about looks and stature? You need to work out. Yeah, like, you don't have to be like buffed. You don't have to be like, I'm, I'm like a God muscle man. But you do need, you don't want to be overweight. That's for sure. You have to look like you can protect them. And you have to look, and you have to walk proud. Like, like I don't walk down the street, I strut. So when I walk down the street, you have to be like the man. You'd walk down and people just literally be moving out of your way. You have to show yep. that confidence. It's all about confidence in Japan. Yep. Uh, yep. Thanks for that, brothers. Uh, shout out to Terrell Boxley for the $99 super chat. I'm just doing my thing in Fargo. Shout out to Passport Brothers. Shout out to Team Asia and Team Latina. Not la- not Latina, bro. Latina. Uh, Morocco, November 2021. Yes, bro. I hope that goes well, bro. Let me know how that how that goes, Terrell Boxley. That's a legend right there. Uh, yeah. More success Real to you, boxing. bro. Thank you, brother. Um, mm-hmm. Me and Terrell had a stream the other day regarding setting up your own food store. To supplement your income, brothers. I suggest you watch that stream if you want to make more money in the states. The brother to Royal Boxy got a lot of intel on there. Uh, shout out to uh Dimitri Clark. Um, he says, Shout out to Dimitri Clark for the ten dollar super chat. He says, I was watching a video by Kevin Samuels, I was intrigued by the video titles. Were women here or there checking for brothers? I wanted to know the exact same thing. Went out the rabbit hole. Oh, there you go, brothers. The solution, you yeah. know. He came from Kevin Samuels, who shows you the problems of Western women. He came to my channel, where I show you the solutions from Western women. You know, yeah. uh, Dimitri Clark, reach out to me through IG and Twitter. I want to give you a formal introduction. I'll, I'll give you a call to see where you are, bro, who you are, what you do, your traveling aspirations, bro. I do that with my new subscribers, bro. So reach out to me on IG ASAP, brother. You'll find my IG on my my IG on my YouTube um, page, bro. But I also post in the group mm-hmm. chat. Um, so moving on from the from the career part now and making money. Mm. So you're you you're in your second year in Japan, you're making so much money, you're doing so well. Let's speak about the woman, you know. I think it's very important now. So you you need to start how when do you start actually mingling with Japanese women? When do you start, you know, dating Japanese women? When do you start putting yourself out there? How you know? You know? You, how do I say this, bro? Like you're making, you're working hard. Now you want to start putting yourself out there, dating, bagging women. Speak on this, brothers. You know, when is the time? When is the perfect time? And then how do you maneuver around the whole dating scene? I don't know how to say it. But Tony, you Tony, Tony, you go first. This is gonna yes. be interesting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, brothers, I gotta let you guys know, man. Like I said, remember how Theo was saying that we don't care about ratios. We was getting the question about. What's the, what's the seven to one or whatever? We don't need to worry about ratios, brothers. As soon as you walk out of your house, you're uh, already being inspired. Uh, These they already have interest in you, and you're busy. Yeah, you're a busy man. You're studying. You're going to work. You're doing all this thing. But you know, in Japan, like Theo said, without that television, you find that you have a lot of time to indulge out there. You really do, mm-hmm. and and you you don't even have to really approach them. 
they're going to, what I love about Japanese women, and Theo probably knows this too, is they make themselves approachable. Yep. That's the problem that Western women have. They don't know how to make themselves approachable. Japanese always let you know, hey, I'm single, I'm willing, and I'm able. They're throwing it out there. If they can walk around with red flags with hearts on them, that's what that that's what they're doing. Trust yeah. me. Yeah, like and, oh, I'm also flexible. And I'm flexible. Like, <laughs> so there, there's like no cook. there's no problem. You're gonna be able yeah. to date as many as you want. Only thing you have to be willing to do is understand the game. Basically, and I wouldn't call it a game, but don't tell a woman that you love them if that's not the only woman that's, that you want to settle on. Because mm. once you do yeah. that, you'll get treated differently because now she's going to make everything possible to make sure that that gets carried through as in marriage. See? So mm. you don't want to tell a woman you love them unless that's the only one you're really thinking about going out with. And we will touch on this very in-depthly tomorrow. So Theo and Tony are back again tomorrow to speak yes. about um, how to uh, seal the deal with Japanese when we're going to go into depth. Because we know they're checking for brothers, right? But yes. if you want to actually escalate things, go for the first kiss. You know, smash, marriage, you know, understand the whole dynamic about Japanese women, how they think, how they maneuver. Theo and Tony will break that down tomorrow. So let's not give away too much, brothers. But, yep, yeah, uh, thank I'll, you for that. I'll answer... I'll answer the question as well real, real quick on that. So I was 24 when I went there. Um, I dated my first month. Then I stopped. Uh, I, I largely did not date for two, a two-year time period. And um, when I started dating, I was actually in IT. I started dating a little bit, not that much. I didn't really start dating until I was my second year of IT. That was in my third year altogether in Japan, somewhere around there. So I was about 26 and that's what about the, that thing was is that when i was 26 i was fully fluent in japanese i had a lethal level of japanese and then when i was 27 that's when it, it went hinged it went nuts because i was making between six and seven thousand dollars a month i was still in the guest houses but i had super burn money and i was able to go to kanagawa again and start dating there and that's exactly what i did i dated in kanagawa and I, the women, oh my goodness. Yeah, I knew how to pick up chicks. I knew, I knew how to joke. I knew nuances and that's because I knew the language. And I was just, it was like one after another. And then that's when I started going to the nightclubs and that it was easy. It was just like, oh, this is too simple. Like you, I could just tell like one, two, three, she wants to talk to me, she wants, she wants, she wants. And I didn't have like a perfect body or anything. Most of the time I was like between thin, and, well, sometimes I was overweight, you know, too much rice. Um, it didn't really matter. Like I had the confidence, and um, there were just one woman after another. I had crazy experiences in parks. What you could do between a, behind a tree? Oh my goodness! I, I I came out of there. I was like, oh, I'm not innocent anymore. And on the train, crazy shit. <laughs> on the train, woo! Like you could just the do train bathrooms was so, open season. <laughs> oh, it was. That's exactly yep. correct. Um, so. I just, I just want to say that it, it, I didn't just go out, like, land there and start going immediately for the most part. I actually developed the plan. Um, besides, well, yeah, the, the secretaries in the English schools who wanted to date me, I dated them. But that didn't really count. They were like, that was too easy. Yeah, that was like free sushi. That's just residual. Yeah. Collateral. Yeah, that's just collateral. Yeah. <laughs> collateral. That's right. How did you go to <laughs> How did you go two years without dating for you? That must be very hard, especially with all the beautiful Japanese women you see walking out every day. How did you restrict yourself from not even dating for two years, bro? How? Um, it was more like I knew if I got my Japanese to a super powerful level, then I, I could easily date country chicks. And that was my market was country chicks. So at, at the end of two years, I mean, I was able to read the Japanese constitution. I could read um, the Kenpo, Nihon Keizai yeah. Shinbun. Yeah, yeah I, I was able to read everything. And I can still pretty much read it now, even all those years later. So because of that, I mean, I could date a woman on the strength of my Japanese alone, not just oh, me being yeah. a foreigner. So that, like, the foreigner was a plus. I was bringing yes. in so many other mad skills to her. It was just like one girl, another one, another one. It makes that's, it easier. That's guys, what I wanted. 
When you speak the language, yeah. that was the same thing with me. Speaking the language, reading the Nippon magazines, you know, all kind of publications out there, the Yomi Yoni Shimbun. I mean, you know, you're out mm. there doing these things. And, and I used to be on the train with the old, the rest of the guys reading the newspaper. And then they would pop up to you like, oh, you know, how, yeah, you work on myself. Yeah. You know, they, and they're so surprised. And then it turned to a conversation. And the next you know, I'm at her house and she's cooking me dinner. Damn. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times yeah. you find yourself like backing into it, like, well, how did I get here? You don't even remember how you got there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they were definitely um, at, at, at inviting us to the houses. And I don't know how many houses yeah. I went to. And I would just sit yeah. back and I was like, if this were in the West, there was no way I'd go into this person's house. I'd no. be scared to death. And I was no. just like, in the in, in Japan, just make sure your socks don't stink. You're fine. Yep. Go in there. And they and, love to cook and, for you. They love to cook for cook. you. I mean, they oh. a lot of them they, they can't they're not the best when they're younger. Cause I know my my wife, she couldn't cook, but she learned from her mom. She made it a point to learn. But they will know how to cook a special dish. Like they may be special at sushi or I mean not sushi, but curry or pasta. So they'll focus on that one dish and then they'll throw like all these beautiful things around the dish, like a nice fruit salad or this or bread. And then, then you get to their house and it's looking like nice, like, damn, this is beautiful. And you think they can cook, but they're not as good. They just know how to cook that. But they start from yeah. that. Yep. All right, no, brothers. that's entirely correct. Yep, yep, yep. Um, oh, wow. Um, Actually, hold on, let me read the super chats first. This is this is crazy. Shout out to uh, Dimitri Clark for the five dollars super chat. Easy day doing it now. Thank you, bro. Much appreciated, brother. Uh, shout out to Mike M for the twenty dollars super chat. He says this is probably one of the first streams IP didn't have to ask for likes. Hashtag Team Asia. What were your top three? What were your top three preferred places to live beyond Tony? Speak on that, brothers. Do you mm. want to answer that one first, Tony? Yeah, I'll, I'll go, brother. Thank you. Um, so I lived in three different places in Japan. I lived in Okinawa Prefecture. I lived in Osaka Prefecture, Mie Prefecture. But if I had to pick based on what I know, and I've been to 19 prefectures. So I've been basically all over Japan. They have 47. I've still got like another uh, 28 to go. But here's the thing is if I had a choice, number one, where my wife is from, Niigata, which where I have a, we have a house over there. So that's, that's already there. The second one would be Hokkaido the Sapporo area or Hakodate area. That's number two. And then number three would be like the Ishikawa, Kanazawa area, if I had to. So those are the three, because the reason why I like those particular areas, because you don't have a lot of foreigners, number one. Yeah, Kanazawa gets a lot of visits, but they don't stay. And it's more traditional Japanese. And that Kanazawa side, earthquake-wise, is one of the safest places to be in Japan, to be safe from earthquakes. Hokkaido, I like Hokkaido because the women are very friendly up there and the food Ooh. is very good. Very good. good. And they eat well. That's some of the best. That is the best food in Japan. Best sushi, sashimi, bar none. And they got the none, best yeah. like crabs and I mean the milk, the cheese. It's just such good eating up there. And I, I would add Aomori. If I can add a fourth, Aomori because I love the women in Aomori. The Tohoku girls, I love them. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah. my mind. That's, that's my late wife was Alan Woody. Um, yeah. So for myself, well, okay. So I was Tokyo. That was it. So um, I was in, okay. So if you go to West Tokyo, Masashi Kogane, mm -hmm. um, little boring place. I didn't like it that much, but I was there. Uh, number two was Mitaka. I was there more than once. The Mitaka area was uh, interesting, but it was a good, like a sleeper town. But it was a good place for me to learn how to integrate in Japan. But my the story of my life is um, Senpukuchi Kawa. I, I put it into the chat. So Senpukuchi Kawa has two areas in, in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I lived along there nine years. And to this day, there's a great deal of my identity, my actions, the way I do things, the way I think, that come from me living in this area. And if I if I could replicate anything, like if I let's say I won like two million dollars, I would have a house along Senpukuchigawa immediately. I would go back yeah. and make sure I got the visa correct. I'd buy a house there, and that would be it. I would work remote. I would never step foot mm -hmm. in the United States again. I'd be done. Wow! Um, shout out to both brothers. Um, brothers, um, I have a question for you. I think it's uh, it's needed, right? I think brothers need to prepare. 
um, we need to make sure their confidence is on point when they go to Japan because, you know, in the West, right, let's be real here, um, the women here chase after the top tier men, top 5%, top 20% of men, which leaves most brothers out of the dating game. Let's keep it real. But when these brothers go to Japan, they're literally at the top of the chain. So a lot of beautiful women will be giving them attention. You know, and brothers need to make need to be aware of giving them eye contact, looking at them right in the eye, you know, being confident. But when a beautiful woman is actually giving you play, it can it can feel alien to you, brothers, don't you think? So Tony and Theo, I want you brothers to emphasize a point as to fixing your confidence, understand that what's happening in the West is not normal. When you go to Japan, you actually need to actually be a man and actually take the ball by the horn because I've seen brothers freeze up when, they, when a beautiful woman actually makes her intentions clear. They're like, whoa, it, it, this can't be real. She can't be interested in me. <laughs> but in Japan, you, you're going to have 100 Japanese chicks interested in you in one goal. You can't be um, a, a flipping um, scared of that, about that. Speak on that, Tony and Phil, because that's very important, don't you think? Yeah, confidence is, like I said, I can't stress that enough, man. And, and like I said, you always want to stay on top of the game. You always want to stay ahead of them. Like I always tell people, I never ask these women nothing. I tell them. I just say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to do that. We're going to go here. We're going to do that. Even with my wife today, I don't ask my wife much. I might ask my wife how she feels. I might ask my wife if she, if she likes to eat this or that. But it, it, here's a secret. You give them a choice. You want to go to Dallas or you want to go to Chicago? You don't add Montreal in the fix. You want to go to Vancouver or Victoria? You don't throw, throw Minneapolis in there. That way, they're going to choose which one you want. You always They love it when you give them choices. But those choices are, are places that you are giving them, selections you're giving to them. They mm. don't like if you're if you're a simp, they will walk over you because a lot, unfortunately, a lot of young men in Japan are simps. They will walk over you if you're a simp. They will ride, they will drive the bus over you if you're a simp. But if you're a man and you know you got the get ahead of the game when, when you make them cry, when they start crying, they're getting emotional around you, it's a wrap. They're done. They'll they'll jump up and down like a lap dog when you tell them to. Mm. Thanks, no, that man. is extremely that is extremely well stated um, something I found out in the beginning was that the, the Japanese women expected you to be a man and you, they were women and that there was a line and you needed to respect the line and if you did you would, you would be benefited or blessed with it uh, and I learned to be as masculine as I possibly could uh, from that point on Unfortunately, I did not have entirety for um, RP frame. Um, I was more a little bit more on the simp side. In fact, as things went on, I, I more of the simp started coming out, and I had to deal with that. Um, that actually gave me quite a negative experience, and you have to get rid of it. And I see other foreigners there who have the same experience. They're still rather in a gynocentric Western way of thinking about things and getting rid of that simplest behavior uh takes a little bit of time hopefully the japanese will actually help you and encourage you to get rid of it the sooner you do the better things will be off for you uh so um again when particularly when i wasn't simping when i was my most rp keeping my frame i dated unbelievable women um mm -hmm. and if you if you're like Oh, I can't date her because I'm I, I don't know. I don't she looks too good for me, or um I haven't dated a woman like that. You're just shooting yourself in the foot. I mean, literally, you must as well just pull a katana and just cut your it, I, guess, I can't say that. But yeah. you might as well you just know, emasculate yourself because that's what you just did. Yeah, you have to like with like a Japanese woman will ask you, Oh, I said don't we could know like the means uh, where are you going tomorrow? And you just come back and say, Oh, Mara wa kara nai ma ma shimashinade. I said she got she got shimashinade. You know, you just say, look, don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm busy tomorrow. I'll, I'll hit you up when I hit you up. That's how you got to talk to him as a man. The mm -hmm. simps be like, where are you going tomorrow? Oh, oh, I don't know. Um, you, Where do you think I should go? They're asking a the woman where you think I should go. <laughs> you don't do that. You say, look, I, I'll hit you back. I'll hit you back. Uh, let, I'll, I'll call you when I call you. All right? Don't worry about mm -hmm. me. I'll call you when I call you. You have a good time. See you. I'll see you tomorrow. And you, when you're leaving, you don't turn around and look back. You just go get on your train and go on home and keep going. You you mm. never let them know. You keep looking back. Oh, looking back. For looking back for what? I ain't got time yeah. to look back. It's other women out there to look at. Damn. Yo, brothers, this is some crazy game here. Um, I've got a super chat here uh, from Little Man JP. What's up, Little Man JP? 
please uh, donate two dollars. Thank you, bro. Can you do damage with uh, intermediate Japanese? Speak on that, Tony. Yeah. I, I mean, they don't expect you to first get to the country and know it all. I mean, it, it helps to know the language. It helps. It really does. That it's always a positive. Intermediate Japanese, you can get by, but if you want to start getting into a real nice career and you want to start making some real serious money and be, be taken seriously, you need to speak fluent Japanese. Okay. And it's that. not hard to do. I mean, out of my languages, Japanese is the easiest language I have. It's mm -hmm. simple. I mean, it's yeah. really, once you once you get through, get past the first shock, it's yeah. simple after that. It's, it's just scales. It's really easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the thing about that, learning that Japanese too is, I know people take level tests. I, I never took a level test. I almost did. I was going to take the level one, but I just dropped out of it. I just lost interest in it. But here's the thing. As long as you can have engage in a colloquial conversation, because here's what made it easier for me. Once I realized that I won't be able to learn exactly all the Japanese, especially kanji, because there's Japanese that don't know certain kanji. Like they don't know doctor kanji, lawyer kanji, things like that. Once you figure that out, then you start to become even more fluent because you start to realize that there's no pressure. Don't put the pressure mm -hmm. on yourself. And when you speak in Japanese, think in Japanese. That's another thing. Mm, yep. Think in the language you speak in. Thank you, brothers. Um, shout out to Lil Man JP stop, again. Stop, for... stop, stop, stop. That, mm. that, delete it. Yep. Whoa. Delete it. Yeah, yeah, give it a soap, Whoa. man. Yep. Don't need that. Yep. No. Give it that. Huh? Things. Yeah. Well, what's no, going on? No, you're not going to, we're not going to talk about it. No, oh. we don't want to talk about that, brother. Get get that. You get, no. get that. Thing. We don't want. Yo, that. okay. Let me let me remove yeah. that comment. Yo, what's what's going on? Hey, you brothers, man. I swear down, brothers. Hey, okay. Now let me put that user on timeout. Hey, brother, you, was that really offensive, brothers? Yeah. Shall we, shall I put on timeout? Um, it's something timeout? that you don't want on your channel. No. And it's something I, I mm, you just don't want that. You don't I want mean, that on your channel, brother. Yo, no. what what? Hey, brothers. What are you brothers on, man? How many times do I tell you, don't act up on my channel? If, if you're out here um, talking nonsense on my channel, um, you're going to... Mmm. Mmm. What are you brothers on? Yeah. Don't... Oh, yeah. my... Okay, okay. Um, Aaron man, B JP, said somebody's a racist. I'm not sure what he means by who's a racist. I, I might have to... Oh, my goodness. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold I mean, on. Um, put you on time up. Yo, brothers, Theo and I are not up here to deal with the BS, man. We're not up here to play these games, okay? Either you're gonna get up here and yak right, or you're gonna get your ass off the post. That's the bottom line, man. This is Yo. not. This is about Japan. We're not. We wait. We're spending our time, a hard-earned time, to get up here, man. We don't need the immaturity. We don't need the names and the callback. If you don't like the post, if you don't want to learn nothing, get your ass off the post, man, and let the guys that want to learn something know something about. It. Be a man, and that's what I'm talking about. Guys like that are gonna be simple forever, man. They're never gonna have nothing. You got to be willing to put the work in. This is not a game. This is a serious mm. stream up here. And we got two brothers up here with more than 25 years experience in Japan giving yeah. us some serious intel. What are you brothers on? No man, JP, <laughs> if, you act, if you act up one more time, you're getting a permanent ban hammer because I don't even know what that even means. Well, mm. well, we know what that means. We know what that means. <laughs> don't, we know what that means. <laughs> don't, don't you ever come on my channel to, um, talking that jazz on my, again. No, um, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not fair at all. <coughs> oh man! Yeah, all right, you thank you for. Have, you wouldn't even know. No, you wouldn't. Like, you could have gotten. You could have gotten, gotten potentially gotten on strike with YouTube with that one. So yeah, like you don't want to. If Theo and I weren't up here, you you would have probably not been on the next stream. All right. Um. Let me let me ban this guy. Um. I, I'm I'm not even happy anymore. Let me put this guy. Hold on. Um. I'm gonna. Uh, hold hold on, brothers. That's just ruined the whole flipping. <laughs> let, me, let me try to find this guy. I don't. I don't know. Nah, I don't. <sighs> hold on, hold on, brothers. Um, why? Why I do that? Question for you, brothers. Um, mm -hmm. speak about buying a house. Uh, in Japan. Um, yeah, how yeah. hard it, is it? What's the process like? Especially when you're established, uh, you you want to stop renting, you know. So and you want to buy a house eventually. You want to live there for for the rest of your life. Um. Speak on that, brothers. I, I can give you some input on that because I have experience with that now. Um, so, um, and, and you may come into the situation, more than likely you will, if you come into a situation where you, you, your, your wife 
is the oldest daughter. Like my wife is the oldest daughter out of two. And her father happens to own two properties, one that he grew up in, which is like two and a half hours from where they're living now. And he has another property where he's living in now. Well, you know, I, I, I noticed that she said that he wanted to sell the property, but I really like the area where he grew up at. I love the mountains right at the where the Japanese first, uh, where skiing was first brought into Japan. So I reached out to him. I said, hey, you know what? I'm interested in that property. I'm interested in, in doing something with that. You know, the guy and his wife, they cried on the video call with us. They were so happy that we're going to keep that in the family. So if you're fortunate enough to get come into some property, that, that's the best, easiest way to obtain it. I mean, obviously, we don't know how the tax is going to work yet. We haven't figured that out because we haven't been there since the COVID. But the best way to buy is if you already have a Japanese. If you're married to a Japanese, it's going to be easier to buy property than if you're not. That's, that's the only thing I can say about that so far. Yeah, so I'll explain it on my side. Um, so, like, okay, so getting a for a for a Japanese person to buy property, actually, I'm, I'm talking from the Tokyo point of view, is actually very hard to do, and they usually have to work a number of years saving up their money in order to get the twenty percent, and it is actually extremely difficult to do. So, for the foreigner, you may not necessarily have those twenty years to wait. Sorry, get, we're not going to put that twenty percent down. They're very stringent regarding uh, the mortgage requirements. And um, like I, even when I was working for the bank, I was working for Mizuho. They didn't care. They weren't going to give me a mortgage. So I actually got a mortgage eventually with um, Barron's, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a foreign bank. I got a 2%. Um, but even then, they, they were looking at me like, why should we even give you a bank loan? So it is like they, they're not like they don't want to give you the bank loan. Like they want to give this only to Japanese people, and that's the way it should be. You don't want to you don't want to buy a house in Tokyo. What you want to do, because also we're, we're going to say in this, though the houses are very shoddy, so there's earthquakes, right? So most houses get destroyed anyway after thirty or forty years, and they have zero re resale value. Only the land has value. So if you're going to buy a house, my recommendation is um, go buy one in your country. And then make your payments on that, and or have rent it out. And then when you when you're ready to go back home, um, go ahead and, and do that at that point. And then um, if you want to have a condo in Tokyo, that's the best way. Just buy a condo, and there is some help to get that. And then you can go, you can live in both countries, and then you can rent them out if necessary. That's that's a good option. And, and another so, one would be too, like it, that's in the city, but in the countryside. You can, it's actually easier to buy if you have the cash. Because here's the thing. A lot of people move from the country to the city, right? So you got these old people in the country working this land in these houses that they build, but their kids are gone. So now these places, they got some parts of Japan where they're actually giving away the real estate, but mm -hmm. it's, on, it's the stipulations involved, right? So like I told you, the brother that Donald Gray bought that property in, in Miyoko, which is a beautiful area for $60,000, mountainous ski resort area. He bought it only for 60 Gs. So the houses, like Theo said, the houses aren't worth much, but the land is more. Now, here's the thing you understand. When you do purchase, though, outside the cities, your property actually depreciates because the house gets old. In Tokyo, mm -hmm. it'll only appreciate if you buy, like, near the train station, convenient area. Jap Japanese are location animals. They like to be in the best location, the most convenient location. So mm -hmm. right now, I think it's actually, if you take the contrarian approach, you should be looking to buy houses in the countryside that you can get. Like we're going to do, we're going to tear down the old house and build up a new one on that, on that same land. That's where, you, that's where you start to see some benefits. But it, but it does, it is a lot of red tape, though. It's a lot of red tape. And you're not more likely you won't get a loan. You're going to have to bring the cash. Yeah, it is a pain in the butt. You do not want to go through this. And so when there are guys coming up here and they're talking about buying houses, and I'm looking at them like, you don't even speak Japanese, and you want to get a little bank loan in Japan? Are you kidding me? You're going to get destroyed. You know, what a waste. So your your approach should actually be to get marry a Japanese girl, bring her back to your country, and then maybe make the 20% down deposit in Tokyo, and then use that when you go back and then you have your house. I mean, that's that, that would be a, a decent solution. You don't want to go through all the hassle. I mean, don't do that. I mean, don't. my goodness. I don't even so, know why someone would go through that. 
So you're saying um, rent as much as possible uh, in Japan, mm. but when it if you mm. if you're thinking about seriously buying a property, um, buying in the countryside, avoid buying in buying it in the city. Um, and if you want to buy in a city, marry a Japanese woman um, who can help out with that. She's Japanese. It'll most most likely give her the bank loan to buy the property. Then you put in your name. Is that what you, you're saying? You can't. Yeah. You cannot buy the house as a foreigner. Oh, okay. It's impossible. You, it's like they can still say no to you. So you have to be married to a Japanese woman. Now, she doesn't have to work, yeah. but you just yeah. have to have that union. And then yes. they'll consider you maybe. But for about 90% of the time, even if you're married to a Japanese woman, they will not do it. So then you yeah. have to make sure you have enough money for the deposit. And then you have the work history. And these are years yeah. upon years upon years of work history. And it's a pain in the butt. Like why you would do it, I don't know. Just go yeah. like, buy the house in your country. Why are you doing that? Yeah, I, I, if I didn't have the, pro- the well, dad's property coming, I wouldn't buy a house there too. But for your brothers are tired of America. Brothers are tired of the whole culture, tired of the fottery, the holism. The Megans, the Cardi Bs, they don't want to be in America. Do I? They fully want to live in Japan forever. So, and you don't want to rent for thirty years. You want to have your own property, own it. So, what brother's going to do then, Theo? You know? Okay, let me. Oh, I, I will explain this because again, Tony has experience. Maybe you can comment on this. So, if you bring your Japanese woman, your wife, back to the states, you're also bringing her culture. So, you're going to have. Sure, you might have Netflix. It'll all be Japanese. You'll have Fuji Telebi, which is something I love watching in Japan. Um, you'll have Japanese movies. You'll have Japanese everything, Japanese YouTube. So she's not going to engage in Cardi B. She's going to think this is nuts. And you're going to have a small Tokyo in your house. Yep. There's no way she's, going to, she's not going to become Americanized. It'll take her a very long time, if okay. ever, to go that way. It just won't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Theo's right. I know my wife. I mean, we've been married 14 years, and she's still the same person I met when I first started dating. She's still the same person. She's gotten sweeter. She's gotten more experience with running and managing a family, but she's still the same Hiroko I met when I first met her. And she just got, we just bonded more. And like I said, they're built to last. They're built to last. But like, so here's the thing if I were a brother looking at buying property in Japan, I would buy property in, say, a Portugal. Somewhere where it's easier to buy property for you. And if you do intend on buying property in Japan, build up that equity, get that cash, and go over there and buy it. pay cash. That's the only Thank way you. you need to do it. Thank you, brothers. Shout out to Chosen One Music for the $499 Super Chat. God bless all, all three of you, brothers. I'm having difficulty deciding to go to either Japan or Brazil for my first time out of the United States. Uh, what would you recommend, brothers? Well, Japan is closed. I was just trying to go to, to to Japan myself. If you're on my Facebook, my I just about a month ago I asked the same question: Should I go to Japan or Brazil? Uh, Japan is closed because of coronavirus, so I'm going to Brazil. Um, that's just the way it is. So, yeah, you're not going to go to Japan until it releases its, its COVID uh, requirements. Just the way it is. Go to Brazil and meet you a Japanese Brazilian. You're done. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah that, no, that's what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Fio Tony, man. Shout out to uh, Bada Jado for the five dollar super chat. He says, "Flames, thumbs up." Thank you, bro, for the super chat. Much appreciated, brother. Brothers, also the cash app is open as well, brothers. If you can see on the screen, feel free to send donations for the cash app. Uh, cash app does not take away any cash from your donations. YouTube does. So, if you want to support the channel, please do it through cash app first. If you can't cash app, please do it through. Super chats is greatly appreciated. Appreciated, brothers. Going on to my next super chat. Um, shout out to Dimitri. <coughs> five fit for the five hundred yen super chat. What's up, Dimitri? Uh, I think that's um. Uh, what's up, brother? I think I remember who you are. How are you doing, brother? In, in Tokyo. Yeah, Dimitri is good people, man. And I know about that two day that Tokyo earthquake two days ago. It we actually was sitting in Chiba. Sir, I read about that. He said we got hit with an earthquake yeah. uh, two days ago in Tokyo. I hope you're safe, brother. Uh, yeah, where in Tokyo was it in, in the Shibuya region, Akihabara? Where it was no, no, all no. over. It was all, all over. It don't, all it don't over. work. Yes, Tokyo. When Tokyo gets hit, it's not just a little pot. No, it's the like region and then some. Damn. Like I mean, I draw a big circle like all the way up to like Gifu. Like you might even Fujisawa might get. I mean, uh, Fuji might get it. Just go ahead and just go on and draw that big circle. Yokohama's definitely getting hit. 
Um, it actually wasn't too bad. They had a lot of shaking because we got family in Tokyo. Chiba was the center point of it, though, and there was no tsunami. Chiba, yeah. No tsunami. Uh, so it would have been fun. I like sixes. Sixes were fun. Oh, I, I was yeah. in the Kobe quick uh, back when 6,000 people Ooh. got killed. I was actually two hours from there, and everything in my place was like, shoot. it felt like I was on rails. Like It was like shaking, and I thought I was done, man. I thought that was the end of the world. It was that bad. Okay. All right, brothers. Um, I think this has been a very successful last year. I think you've, you've definitely uh, told brothers how to be successful in Japan. If I'm missing something here, brothers, uh, please add it in. Um, I'll give you all the time in the world because I want this stream to be very informative for brothers my all the phone lines. What else do brothers, what else should brothers do in Japan to become successful there, apart from what we discussed? Um, what, what we well, I, I, I think, and this is my plan, this is what I'm doing. Um, first of all, if you can do this, don't go there to work for Japanese. Make all your money Invest your money well. Live off your investments. Get off that 50-50 plan, the 50 hours a week, 50 years. Get off that plan and start to, to think of, way, of get ways of making money, unearned income, through unearned income. Because when you travel in the world or you're in Japan and you know you no matter what, you're sleeping, you're still getting money, you're not going to have a problem. The problems happen when you try to live in Japan as a Japanese. You will You will not be happy because you will be struggling a lot because you don't have the connections. Japanese live well because they have connections. Somebody brings fish to your house. This person brings liquor. You bring apples over there. This person brings this, this treat. You treat each other. That's what it is. And that's how you're able to afford that kind of life. But if you don't know anybody, you can't do it. Hmm. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, one of the points that I would say is, when it comes to Japan, ask the Japanese the questions about their culture and stop listening to Westerners. Mm. And this is the, the big one on here because I mean, I'm hearing different comments in, in the stream and I'm looking at them like, oh my goodness, you have no idea what you're talking about. And it reminds me of guys going around talking about ninjas. And I was, <laughs> as an adult, oh, no. I was I didn't do ninjas at all, so I came back to America. They're talking about ninjas. I was like, "What are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. there's no ninja. Like, what?" And they're like all into this like this big ninja stuff. And I'm like, "You have no idea, man. It's Bushido, man. That's 100 percent Bushido. Yep. That's all you need to focus on. Nobody yep. gets a crap about a ninja." And I was like, "Why are you doing this?" And then they're going around talking about like teriyaki sauce and stuff. And ah. I'm like. <laughs> I, I rarely, if ever, had teriyaki. What are you talking about? And you get this crap, and it's just you, when you have these people, this idea, and they're saying, like, I know about Japan. I'm like, man, you, don't, you weren't there. You don't know what you're talking no. about. Ask the Japanese people, and yeah. you'll get the proper education. Because if you start in the States, another secret about the teriyaki thing. Teriyaki restaurants are not owned by Japanese. They're owned by other Asian demographics, like Korean, mostly Korean. And they, they got an idea, oh, let's, we can make more money if we do teriyaki. So throw Junko's teriyaki. That's, Japanese don't even name their restaurants that way. And they don't even, no. they, 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 that's not what they do. So sometimes you get guys who are like, like my neighbors, like, oh, we went to a really good sushi restaurant, man, we're going to take you guys to. He took us there, and I was like, it's not even Japanese. My wife was speaking Japanese. I was speaking Japanese too. They couldn't even respond to us. I'm like, dude, what, what's this? We didn't, we didn't, we weren't rude to him, but I was thinking, I'm not going there no more. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really correct. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how many times people say to me, this is a Japanese restaurant. I walk in and I start drinking Japanese. I'm like, this isn't Japanese, man. No. Like, no, 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 man. It, it'd be like if you go to Japan and um, Somebody made a taco for you, and you say, "Oh, this is a Japanese, like a Mexican restaurant." You know better than that. Us Americans would know better. We know what a Mexican restaurant is, yep. uh, and we don't we don't play around with this. Um, yeah, it's it's really frustrating. And it, oh well, so you have to actually talk and get to know the, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brothers. Um, shout out to Sean Camp. For the 11 pounds, one pence cash app. Thank you, bro. Much appreciated, brother. Hope you're well. Um, shout, um, shout out to uh, Tony K 
bro did 73 pence cash up he says for streaming thank you bro for the cash up much appreciated brother um i think yeah this has been a very great live stream brothers thank you so much for breaking it down as to what brothers need to do to be successful in japan especially the career mm. segment i thought that was very helpful um mm. so i will prop the phone lines um so brothers can ask your questions anyone who who attempts to pull any type of nonsense any type of troll in the super chat comments or any comments in general it's gonna be a straight ban um just, just don't do it you we're all adults here uh, i don't know why you would super chat uh, a question like that and I, i'm going to speak to both of these brothers afterwards to see what that actually was you know i'm, I'm very upset that ruined the whole mood uh, I, I don't like seeing that <laughs> you know, um, i'm on the facebook group brothers um so feel free to join the facebook group send your request in um, ask any questions to high value men such as Theo and Tony, who are also on the Facebook group. I'm on there as well. Jay Bones, Thomas Demihan, etc. etc. Moving on from the Facebook group, brothers, uh, I'm also on uh, uh, IG. I, I strongly suggest you brothers follow me on IG. Um, send me a DM on IG. I post up updates on IG. You know, I also call people for IG as well. So I, I may call you if you're a new subscriber or if you want to talk to me, I'm here to speak to brothers. So uh, feel free to follow me on IG and call me on IG mm-hmm. and, and send me a message. Last but not least, brothers, I'm also on Twitter. Uh, I strongly advise you, brothers, to follow me on Twitter and send me a DM. I'm also using Twitter quite a lot now to push out the international passport movement. And I will reach out to you through the DMs with your call through Twitter if needed. So that's another platform for brothers to get in touch with me on Twitter. Last but not least, brothers, I've got the Cash App open. Um, support the movement support the time that I take to give you guys these classics. It's 4 a.m. over here in the UK. It's not easy streaming this long, brothers, you know, on a Saturday, you know, and I've got plans as well. So, brothers, please, please, um, support, 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 support. Okay, um, I will up the phone lines. Keep it respectful. Um, let me get some water first. Give me a second, brothers. <sighs> Okay, brothers, let's open up the phone lines. If you have any questions, if you can't call in, uh, please cash up or super chat your questions. So to, uh, to get your questions answered, right, you call in. If you can't call in, you cash up or super chat your questions. That's the rules here on my channel. All right, hold on, brothers. No BS, no trolling, none of that. No nonsense. You know, you're all adults here. If you're here to play games, you're going to get banned ASAP. I'm not even joking anymore. You know, please, brothers, don't be that person. Yeah. Um, where's Tony Berry? Where's Tony Berry? Oh, hold on, brothers. Um, where's Tony? And brothers, get the likes up as well. Um, if, if you're not at the video already. And if you're a new viewer to my channel uh, through... Um, what's it called through the stream through any of the streams brothers please subscribe to the channel right and when you subscribe press notification bell to always so you never miss a post upload or live stream from me subscribe 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 for classic content so the phone lines are open now i'll put in the live stream chat uh again if you want to if you want your questions answered call in if you can't call in cash app or super chat your questions all right, brothers. Um, shout out to Darius Harper for the $5 super chat. He says, um, I'm currently in school uh, for film production. Uh, interested in making movies. 
is there any opportunity for foreigners in Japanese Hollywood for black men? Speak on that, Tony and Phil. Uh, so, okay, so he he's wants to know is there an opportunity for, for um, yes, what? yes, there is, yes, there is. So, um, th there are uh, quite a few uh, celebrities that are, that are black in Japan that are doing really well. Um, I know one. Uh, his name is Jiro. He's an Inca singer. The Inca is the is a Jap is a Japanese folk music. He's singing. He's pretty popular over there. Um, yep. There's a. I know him. Yep. You're you, correct. You right. You know Jiro. He's and he's his his grandmother's mm -hmm. Japanese. So his grandmother yep. used to play Inca all the time, and that's how he learned how to sing it. And you have you have some celebrities over here. You have this guy called Anthony, who is uh, a really funny guy. He's an up and coming comedian, but he's very popular in Japan. So yeah, you have an opportunity in Japan if you want to, if you if you know what you're doing. Yep, I think probably need to consider making Japan a, a base for us. You know, we, Japan has a lot of problems there, right? Especially between men and women and the birth rates in Japan. So that's where we as foreigners come in. Eventually, Japan needs to open up its country to foreigners, in my opinion. If it wants to survive for the long term. It needs to open up its, its borders for foreigners like us to get in there and, um, you know, wipe up Japanese women and have babies with them. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> no, I'm and let, and let's have four. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm, keep, I'm keeping it real. You know, the birth rate's going down drastically. Men and women there are in, are in disarray. That's where we come in to just wipe up Japanese women, you know, have babies with them. And that, as simple as that. But don't you agree, Theo and Tony? I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, I agree, but at the same time, I don't want a lot of foreigners in Japan because I don't want to be on the bullet train or Shinkansen as they call them and, and have the have the, the snack lady. You know, there's a lady on the Shinkansen that pushes the carts. I love them too. They have all these delicious things to get, drink and stuff. And I don't want to see that person not be a Japanese woman. Okay. I love seeing the, the, the lovely Japanese lady pushing the cart around. She's usually like early twenties and nice shape and smile and everything. I want that to stay Japanese. I want a lot mm. of things to stay Japanese. And, and like you said, but on the other side, I know that they do need to open up because they are running out of time and they're running out of people. To, you know, They have more people over 60 than they have under 14. Mm. So that's, a, that's an issue right now. Yeah. And um, again, we, we don't want Peking Railways and Tyrones to come there. It's for educated brothers to make it our base. Yes. Come in there, understand the market, date these Japanese women, wife them up, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's for educated brothers only. Puki railways, Tyrones, please don't apply. You're not yep. needed. Stay, stay in America and deal with Keisha. All right. Yeah. Let you me bring in. That you are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring in uh, Crazy Kaz. What's up, brother? Uh, how you doing, guys? What's up, Crazy Kaz? I'm good, man. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Uh, so this is kind of a personal question, which I said is really inspiring to me. Uh, I'm my age right now. I'm 20, about to be 21 January. And my question is, do you think I still have time to master kanji, get into IT within a certain time frame? Both questions oh. for the and Tony. I'll answer that one first. Uh, so you're 21, right? I'm about to be 21, January 26th. So 21 is when I started my main kanji study and mm -hmm. I didn't go, I didn't go ham on until I was 22. I mm -hmm. didn't start really doing IT until I was 26. Uh, so you have plenty of time. You have plenty of resources. You can definitely go there. You can set yourself up. Um, I would say, uh, again, Tony will also comment on this. You need to do at least a minimum of 20 kanji per day for the first year. And then the second okay. year, increase that to 30 kanji per day. And you want to get all your Jojo kanji, which is your daily kanji. You want to totally master them. And, and then at that point, Japan becomes a lot easier. Yes. And, and a really good way to start off with the kanji, too, even before you get into it, is to look, get a Japanese book like uh, on travel in Japan and get to know the names of the places that you want to travel to. Get to know the kanji. Recognize right. that kanji. Like the first kanji that I recognized or that I learned was Tokyo. 
Okay, that's the first one I learned. And then I started just break, branching off from that. I was in school and I just started picking it up from there. Theo is right. You want, to, you want to perfect yourself. You want to take your time. You're only 20 years old. And I'm going to do another stream on this as IP knows about where young men need to be doing. But if I can bring it in here a little bit, what mm -hmm. you need to be doing is minimizing your weight, minimizing your time wasting on females that don't mean nothing to you. And spend Already more did that. Time, Already spend more time on. Yeah, you yeah. cut them off. Let and Tony perfect, finish. And perfect your craft. Get work on your craft. And by the time you're 25 or 26 years old, you should be at a certain point in your life where you're ready to start taking off. That's what you have to do. You don't. You you got all the time, but you want to cut out the the crap that you don't need right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Crazy Cats, or is that at the moment? Uh. Yeah, man, that is at the moment. Everything else they said was top tier, spot on. I appreciate y'all time coming out Thanks, here. Brother. Thanks, bro. Appreciate. Yeah. Uh, Hold on, let me um get some books out here. Let's yes. Okay. Show this. So right, let me get let me get a pen and paper. Hold on. This was well, dude. It's gonna be on my channel. Carry on, feel. Okay, so this was my first big kanji book that I used, and this is um again the guide to writing Japanese kanji and kana. Um, and this okay. is like this is like second or third time that I bought it. The other ones I utterly destroyed them. I I, <laughs> I used them so highly. Um, this is the second part to it. Uh, it's only about twenty dollars, I think. I just got them again for a review, and then this I remember I was, I was twenty one in France, and this was the my my big one that I used, the guide to remembering yes. Japanese characters. Yeah. And this is, you're just going through there. He gives like this really cool explanation about what it means and what the different parts of the kanji actually mean. And this is really good just to read and to like kind of just soak it in. Cause you, like they kind of talk about this in Japan too, but it gives you good, like a really good perspective. Um, and then if you, later on, this actually, this book just came out, so it's new. Um, I like this one, Kanji Synonyms Guide. Just because okay. there are so many darn synonyms in Japanese. Yeah. And they'll, you'll say something, they're like, what kanji is that? And mm -hmm. they literally mean it because they're like, I don't understand what you're saying because there's too many synonyms. Names and too. So, Names work that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like what's your name in this kanji? What is your, what I, is that? How do you say your name in that? Yeah, exactly. And so you, it's really hard to, like, sometimes it's hard to understand stuff. So. Uh, this synonym guide uh, is really good. Um, I got some others here. I but, um, you. I definitely. I mean, you gotta put some time into it. Like, you mm. can't just be thinking like, I'm, I'm gonna get an app. Like, for, screw that. I mean, I, you know, just listen, if you wanna listen to Japanese language, listen to YouTube. There's plenty of, of Japanese yeah. language on there. Um, but you really need to get the book, and you need to be writing out the kanji, just straight yep. out. Like every yep. single day, and just keep on doing it again, because that's how they do it. It's a, it's about oh, from my university. Go ahead, do it. Yep. Yeah. Wrote that down too. I see it, Tony. Yeah, and then you want that, and then if you want to get into furigana, which is uh -huh. basically like the cut the, the, the uh, hiragana with the kanji. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And mm. then uh, I I keep these for references, like this onbusha. Onbusha is one of the best. Uh, it's one for of the like, best books. Ooh, yeah. it's an English suggestion um, to Japanese. Well, well no, no, it, it's, it's, yeah, exactly, yes, English that's, and Japanese, yes. That's yes. work. It's this work. is work. And then yeah. this mm -hmm. one is, is explaining, like, uh, the Japanese approach to Japanese. Mm. Nihongo. Mm. And then another one that I got is what they call a Kanwa Jiten. Like, this one is the bomb. Mm. It's all in Japanese, though. But yep. when, when you get to that point, you know you're on your way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. These yeah. that's really the way you want to be doing it. You don't want to go an easy path. You want this to be as hardcore as you possibly can. But the benefits at the end are unbelievable. Unbelievable, like, brother. Yeah. Go for it. Yep. All right. Thanks for that, crazy cats. Put yourself on yeah. that, brother. Um, gotcha. gotcha. I'm gonna say this right now, Japan is closed right now. Uh, will most likely open next year. So during this time while it's closed, work hard, learn the language, you know, be, be calm, cut down Netflix hours, all these TV shows. They're gonna they ain't gonna benefit your life. Netflix ain't doesn't care about you. Netflix won't save you. 
but Japanese will benefit your life in some shape, in some shape or matter. Whether it's getting women, whether it's, whether it's for business deals, whether it's living in Japan, it will benefit you. So, you know, um, use your time effectively. All right, thanks for that, Crazy Kaz. Let me bring in Thomas Demihan, the brother right there. What's up, Thomas? What's up, fam? Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Thomas. Where you been? <laughs> uh, we're working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty late. I just, I just got up from bed, fam. <laughs> well, welcome up, back, Thomas? Thomas. We missed you, bro. Missed you. Uh, oh, thanks, bro. What's up, Tony? What's up, What's Theo, up, fam? brother? How you doing, Thomas? All good, fam. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm loving this stream up here with Theo and IP, man. Loving this thing, man. Loving it. Uh, that's great to hear, fam. I've got, I've got a lot of questions, but I'm going to keep it brief. Um, so, for you, Tony, um, you're studying the AWS um, Certified Developer course, right? Yes, yes. Um, I'm currently doing that as well, and it's pretty hardcore compared to the um, Certified Cloud Practitioner course. What's your approach on that? And if yeah. you have any, Do you have any tips for me? Yes, I do. So that that is, and I just want to get that right. That is the developer associate certification. Yeah. Yes, that is the actually the hardest AWS cert to get, but once you get it, man, it just opens up a lot of windows. My approach is I I spent fourteen dollars on the Udemy app that we just talked about earlier in the stream, and what I'm noticing is I've already taken. I just got this app last week, and I've taken uh, the first practice test, and then I read all the answers and. And the questions that, you know, things I got wrong. Yes. Yes. The developer associate guide. That's yes. It's worth spend the money. That so, that so far, like I said, the 14 bucks, I think is well worth it because I'm, I got, I think six practice exams, exams, there's six of them and you take them and then you, 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 you know, you're going to get it wrong. You probably don't get a 30 or 40%, but that's okay. You go back and you read through each. It's like 65 questions a test read through each question and answer, review question, and then you take it again and you will see how much you improve. That's the approach that I would take with that. And get open, uh, create an AWS account for yourself. Create your own account to where you can go in and, and practice like Kubernetes. You can practice like spinning up Lambda functions. You can practice uh, S3 buckets, uh, you know, EC2s. You can spin those up. You can spin up some Docker containers. Just go in and practice what I recommend. Because I do this every day, so it's not as hard for me. Oh, that's awesome, fam. Awesome. Um, yeah. One other question I have is, um, so is it good to, this is for, this is for you, um, both you, um, Theo and Tony, is it good to establish a business in the West and create uh, and expand in Japan? I wouldn't recommend it, Theo, Theo, I guess it's based on what Theo, somebody experienced. Here's the problem is you need contacts in Japan. You need to build a network in Japan, an entire network. Once Japanese get comfortable with you, they take care of you. They will take care of you. They will make sure that you're going to stay afloat because they need you to help their businesses out. So establishing a business in the West and bringing it over to Japan, I think that's a lot. That's a lot more challenging, a lot more. Yeah, it's a lot more. I don't even know why you'd do that. Yeah, you'd want to keep your business in in the West. Why would the amount of capital that you would need in order to make a company in in Tokyo or even a branch office? Because they would consider it to be a, a, a Japanese company. Uh, the amount of capital you need would be massive, more than you can possibly imagine, and then you would bear all the risk. So you, I don't even know why you would want to do it. Like. What what company would you be making? What service would you be making that the Japanese need? That's the first thing you got to think about. So mm -hmm. what is it? And then do the Japanese already have it? Because if they do, then they're gonna go their they're gonna go their pure mastery mode, which is that you need to be having a mastery over a certain amount of time, and your profit really doesn't matter. It's really the path, the mastery that matters. So mm -hmm. they don't care about making lots of money in that way. And you're, I don't know how, how you'd be able to deal with that. That's just not going to be good for you, man. So, I mean, I it, it's a tough. It. Well, well, Tom, it's just like I was telling you before, brother, when you reached out to me, um, you need to come to the States and make this money. Brother, they are paying stupid money over here for IT, man, for positions like off software engineering development, which what Theo is doing, the web application firewalls. They're paying some stupid money. And here's the thing, guys. 
I, and, I, and I'm saying this because I know this is what I'm going to do. I'm not actually going to live permanently in Japan. I'm going to spend maybe four or five months a year there on and off. This is what you should do. Don't look to buy. Don't look to live there. Look to make as much money as you can make in the West and go there and stay there. Stay at the nice inns, nice hotels if you want. Take your lady, the Japanese lady, back and forth as much as she wanted to visit family, stay with family. That's what you should really be doing. That's a lot less headache of a headache for you in the long run. Uh, thanks, thanks. Well, that's that's very valuable. Thank you, brother. Um, no problem. Though. There's one place in Japan that you recently spoke of, and that mm. is Kabuki Cho. Yes. How bad is it? Because I've uh, oh, so so into what, bro. Um, this goes on to IP's question. I am pre- IP. I'm preparing for Japan. Actually, all brothers, I'm preparing for Japan by just watching videos just to understand Japanese culture. Um, I'm just currently looking for um courses online just to learn Japanese. But in my spare time when I'm working, I'm mm-hmm. just I'm just trying to understand how the Japanese society functions. So that's my preparation on Japan. On Japan. But I just want to know, how bad is Kabuki Cho? You don't Kabuki? need to be there. No. no. Avoid it. You just don't need to go there. On, no. scale of one to, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is it? You don't need to be there. <laughs> so let, let, let's, let's, let's put it this way. The reason why Kabuki Cho should be off limits for Westerners is because here's the thing. Japanese men spend a lot of money on entertainment, and I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep this PG, but you know what I mean by entertainment. And so, yeah. you can go in there and thinking you're only gonna spend a certain amount, and you literally walk out there owing money mm-hmm. because you don't. There's no. There's no like a, a special. There's just a tab. You go in there, and you're building up a tab, and you're literally spending an awful lot of money over there. So you have to be really careful of that. You just don't you, know the game. You don't know the culture enough to get involved you know, with that. There's a lot of things to learn, and there's just a lot of street smarts that you don't have, and you don't want to get involved in that. And money's oh, being spent uh, fast, yeah. too. It's being spent yeah. too fast. Okay. Understood. Thanks, brother. Um, Is that one it? other... So just one more question. Just one more question, bro. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So safe to say... I don't want to bring, like, to, uh, I don't feel you said um, it's good to bring your wife, my Japanese um, girlfriend or wife, back to the States or the UK. I'm really against that problem because of the whole um, liberalism. And I'm just really um, very hesitant on doing that. So um, what, if you were, what, what, would, what would you say would be the best steps to approach that situation? You need to be Japanese. You need to be bringing that culture and that frame from Japan with you. So when I brought my wife, well, we, we sometimes we had vacations in America. And when I brought her over, she just kept on commenting about how horrible America was. And she did not want to act American whatsoever. She did not think that of the American way was the way to go. She thought it was the Japanese way was the way to go. Oh, and she wife. expected the Japanese way to be inside the house as well. So that's what you're going to get. Um, so basically, when you're, if, if you bring her over, well, you got to you make sure your money is on point. You need to be bring, you need to be making at least $150,000 in Tokyo anyway, in the end, if you're first going to get married. So then you can make a comparable salary in the West. And that time you're maintaining frame and you're continuing to live. Just don't. Make sure you're making your money. That's the big point. I think that Tony and I are were really saying quite often. Make sure you're making the money properly. Ah, uh, understood. Understood. Uh, thank, thank you very much, brothers. Uh, it's very valuable information. Thanks, brothers. Yeah. Right, thanks for that, Thomas. Um, I've got a, I've got a question for uh, both of um, Theo and and Tokyo. Did you experience any discrimination in in the companies you worked for in Japan? In terms of getting pay rises, were you paid less than your Japanese and em- Japanese employees, and did you experience any racism at all? No, okay. I ne- never had that problem. No, no, I w- I would have stayed there long enough. But yeah, wow. I went out the door, going someplace else. Yeah, getting another job someplace else. I mean, that's it. Mm. I mean, 
I had no loyalty. I was a pure mercenary. <laughs> and you were not yeah. underpaid compared to your Japanese colleagues. Yeah, if you knew their salaries in general. If you knew oh, oh, no. I was much richer than my Japanese colleagues. Yeah. I, me too. I, I, we actually got paid more than the Japanese when we got there. Because here's the thing, especially if you're like a Keiyaku Shine, which is a contract worker, you're going to get paid more. Now, I did experience when I became a Seishai in one company that my pay was not as high as the English teachers because as a Seishai, and they can pay you less than 250,000 yen if they want. And I was actually making the same amount of money as the rest of my Japanese counterparts. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that, brothers. Brothers, again, feel free to cash up. Uh, feel free to super chat, support the channel. If you can't call in, you have any questions, uh, hit the cash app, hit the super chat, and Tony and Fio will answer your questions. Let me bring in Sai Saichi. Hi, Dean Sai Saichi. Long time no see, brother. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, whew, where do I begin? A few questions, actually. I'm glad we have two veterans in here. Thank you for the guests that you were able to bring on to the show. So check it out. Um, Tokyo 64, Tony, um, this first question is for you. So I've already asked Theo this, but I would like to have a second perspective on this. I've learned just from kind of past experiences in America um, that social status is very important. And unfortunately for the brothers, um, the reality is that oftentimes you'll have a lot of girls that will be attracted but they will not want to be associated with you because of the social stigmas that are involved and how society will treat them as a result in the U.S. sometimes. I've just had negative experiences with this. Like, girls will look at you, but they will not be you. Um, and I wanted to know that if in Japan, is there any kind of negative social stigma towards Black males anywhere near to the same degree? No. No. And, and, and remember, I said this on a lot of posts here, and I know Theo knows this. A Japanese woman, for, for the most part, there's no go girl, you go girl attitude in Japan, first of all. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They, they set their own social. Yeah, they have social morales that they adhere to because they're Japanese, yeah. but they're not going to look down on anybody. They don't even, they don't, Japanese don't look down on people. Like that's not what, that's considered to be very rude. For like sure. if you're a maid or you're a butler or something, or you have a, like in the US, what they would call a low level job, yep. Japanese will never look down on you just because you do that job. Right. Okay. Um, I was asking this just because, and I kind of mentioned this to IP a while ago. Um, one thing that really surprised me is, mm -hmm. you know, I had a girl who was raised in Germany that basically told me, she was like, you know, if you were to go to where I was from, the girls out there would love you. And I was just like, what? And I was so surprised because I was so used to being in America and I had that mindset in my head, like, these girls keep looking at me, but they won't have anything to do with me, right? I'm like, why is that happening, right? I put my Tinder on all these other countries. All of a sudden, I started getting matches, had girls message me, whatever. But I just wanted to get some more clarification on Japan, and it sounds like it's very similar in the sense that the social spending thing isn't an issue. Assuming you come on point, you're respectful, you have your ish together, et cetera, et cetera. Correct? You don't have any – yeah, there's no social problems like that. I, I've never experienced that in my years living in Japan. Yeah, you're, the problem is you don't recognize how bad you have it in the States. Right, yes. right. Yeah. So when you go to – we go abroad and you're actually dating there, you turn back and you're like, what was I ever doing? Yes. Like, exactly. You know, okay. Yeah. Like, how many times have I said an IP, like, he says, you dated in, in Austin? I'm like, no, there's an airport. I use my passport. I can leave the country. For so sure. People think that's extreme, and I'm like, nah. If you knew how bad it is here and how good it is over there, you know exactly yep. why I do that. Oh god! I used okay. to hate coming back on the plane in the states. I'd be like, oh, gotta go back to the U.S. Oh, I used to hate that. Windows side, side, man. Oh, man. <laughs> the second thing I would also like to ask from both of you, actually, is that I wanted to know from your experiences. It seems as though, and I think, Theo, you might have mentioned this a while ago, so this is going to be more geared towards Tony. You may have said this where not mm -hmm. only is there not as much of a social segment in some societies, but Tony, when you were, uh, you know, because you've been with a lot of Japanese women in your own life, how did their um, friends respond once they found out, you know, obviously that not only you're a foreigner, but you were a black male? Like, was it like, oh my gosh, like, you know, you're lucky? Was it like any kind of, how was it? It was always a positive. I, I, I got nothing but positive reactions from the oh. friends. I mean, the friends were never even mm -hmm. an issue. Um, if anything, you know, they, they, they seemed like they were the kind that would just wait around and see if something went wrong with you and your girl, that they would try to slide into the picture. But then even Correct. then, you Correct. know, they, 
that that was that they were taking the risk. But if they knew the risk was well worth it, they would. Because like I keep repeating, there is no you go girl attitude in Japan. Every woman out there is is com competition to a Japanese woman. Every woman. Okay. Yeah. Last th last thing I would like to ask for both of you, and you kind of just touched upon it, but I want to go a bit more in depth. When you were with Japanese women. Um, you guys don't really seem like simps. I would assume you guys have reasonably pretty good standards um, mm -hmm. based on the way you, you know, kind of speak about women and your content, whatever. Um, did you ever have to deal with Japanese men ever like maybe giving you dirty looks or like stares or trying to cough off or anything like that? No. Japanese no. guys are the coolest, man, when they see brothers. A lot of the, ja I've never had a problem with a Japanese guy. They always treat me good. They treat me like they want to be around me. They want to hang out with me, especially if yeah. we get to know each other. They don't yep. care. They just no. you will never get a dirty look. Not no. at all. They, oh, they might nothing. look at you like, thank you for relieving me of my issue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, it, the most looks, the most issues we had were when we, when we were in America. That was right. my thing. So, like, I would, my wife and I, we'd be walking down the street speaking in Japanese. There was no English. She didn't want to speak in English. She yep. was a Japanese woman, so she was speaking in Japanese. And people were sometimes coming up to me and saying, why don't you speak in English? Or, like, are you, where are you guys from and stuff? I'm like, get away from me. I'm with my wife, you know. Yeah, what do you, you care? Yeah. yeah, if you say anything to me, I'll just throw you off a bridge. How's that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you, don't, you don't play with that. So um, that was the only issue. I was with my Japanese wife in Tokyo. Like, if mm -hmm. I'm speaking Martian, they wouldn't care. No. And Japanese oh, yeah. women love it when you can protect them. When, like you said, like Theo said, I had the same thing with women coming to me. People come and say, "Were you speaking?" Like I was with my family one time from Japan. This dude comes up and he spoke a little bit Japanese. He started trying to speak Japanese to my sister-in-law. I said, "Hey, dude, hold on. You don't know my family. You don't know you just because you speak a little Japanese. Don't mean that you got the right to come up and start speaking to my people. So you need to go on the back off." And they would respect. It was like, "Oh, damn, Tony. Oh, you was you was up here. <laughs> yeah, they love that. They love it when you stand up." Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tony San, Tony San, Sigoi, Sigoi. Tony yeah, they're like, like Sigoi, yeah, yeah. Sigoi, Sigoi, Tony Kawhi, San. Yo. You know, I said, no, I call tonight, and then that's, uh, you know, that's how I feel. All right, man. So that yeah. was the, the final thing. lives. Yeah, if somebody messes with your wife, you'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll kill you right here and now. Yeah, you got to get out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So based on um, what I'm hearing right now is obviously, like, I haven't, been outside of the States enough, right? Obviously, I don't have that experience yet, which is why I still have this frame of mind, obviously, which is why I'm coming to you guys because you've been there, done that, you know how it is. And it sounds like a completely different dimension. So you have a certain level of experience and I don't yet. Um, last thing I would also like to ask about is, have you um, ever had to deal with, how do I put it like this? Did you ever have to deal with anything from like, you know, like maybe like older generation, like parents, family members, anything like that? Like, were you always accepted with open arms? You saw my pictures I put up there in Facebook of my father-in-law. You seen the way he was looking at my son? Yeah. I yeah. don't think so. I haven't oh, had wow. any problems. I heard of people that did have problems, though, and that, that, would, that may have been like 20 years ago. But mm. even if I was in my situation 20 years ago, which almost is 20 years ago, I, I haven't had any problems, issues with my wife's family whatsoever. Not, a, not one problem. How about you, Theo? Yeah, you know... The mother-in-law was a little cranky. Uh, the father-in-law was an alcoholic, you know. So I mean, it's, you know, you got that. I mean, it's it's nothing. They don't. It's not racial or national. That's just they would right. be that way with anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, yeah, I, I'm glad my parents didn't meet her. Oh boy, would have been bad. That would have been the bad one. Uh, oh god. Yeah, um, so sorry, sorry, that's enough. Thank you, bro. Uh, we got yeah. to run through all the rest of the panel, bro. Sorry, man. It's good. No worries, you're good. You're good. Uh, but I'll come, out, I'll come at you for one last question, everyone, bro. All right. All right. Shout out to uh, Jay Barnes for the $2 super chat. He says, trying to call in, but panel full of Team Asia links. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, funny, guy. funny guy. Um, uh, let me bring in um, Mr. Jay Takashi. How you doing, bro? What's up, Jay? Jay hey, everybody. Else. How are, How are you, you guys man? doing? Good, brother. Good, man. Oh, good, bro. It's a bunch of places right there. Brother, um, places. <laughs> That's yeah. what's up. Yo, let me address Jay Bones for a quick second before we get started. Jay Bones, <laughs> you can't be talking about our team Asia right now, dude. Like, right now, we're <laughs> unstoppable. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you, you sound real salty over there. 
<laughs> in Japan, we would say Omai no Baka. Now, and what's up? And I did want to say oh, something uh, to Theo and, and uh, my man Tony Barry, Tokyo 64. Um, it'll, be a, it'll be a quick uh, introduction. Hajime Musta, Yogoshiku. Hey, Arigato, Theo san. Tony. Yo, Tokyo I'm about the name. I've been, yeah, I've been practicing a lot. Yeah, you have, brother. Yeah. I'm about the name. I'm about the name. How, how are you practicing Arigato. Japanese? Um, so have you, have you done hiragana and katakana uh, already, Jason Kashi? Yes. Okay. Yes. And from then on, have, have you been learning, what are you using to learn Japanese grammar, all these terms? Um, what, what I'm using, okay, it's, it's actually really fun. It's on YouTube right now, JapanesePod101. Dot com. I'm using like three different things. Basically, with T well, with Theo and with Tony have the books and everything, the books and that. And I'm just using all the knowledge I've had from watching and listening. Like Tony said, listen to Japanese broadcasting, just yep. hearing it every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I I'm like a hamster in the wheel right now, absorbing this knowledge just every night. Like I um I'm listening to Japanese Power 101 conversations just daily things that you would generally say when you're in a restaurant or when you're talking and socializing people and i'm not talking about you know the way i said earlier don't slang it just say it the way it was meant to be said so so i've been i've been doing that um international and they got it that they have something on there every day 24 7 but i have like a long freaking playlist of what the whole listen to and i'm been listening to that all week mm -hmm. and um, and, and, and like I said, it's just from experience from really, it just started from with anime from when I was a kid, all the way up to me, just taking all those words, learning, know what word, what, what word means, picking it out. And then, okay. Taskete means help. Mm. Yep. Help. Yep. And, um, arigato means thank you. Sugoi mm. is amazing. Mm. Like just not just picking out the words. It's, you have to say it exactly with the hiragana and katakana you have to do all that and it's a roller coaster for real but it once you do it enough times like repetition it becomes easy like yeah. i'm starting to it's starting to become a little easy right now for me now i, I think um it's just a, uh, like i said i'm working on the kanji once i get the kanji down which is like the super i'll be honest it's the hardest thing for me is the kanji once i get that down i should be good to go no, you, what I'll, you want to do, Jay, you want to get that hiragana down first because, and when you study Japanese, really the best way to study it on the book wise is to just read a Japanese book. Don't get the English part, just get it all right. in Japanese. Talk with the hiragana, get the little booklets. I used to get them in Japan, little ones the first graders learn when they start learning like this, that, and go all the way up. I had the whole thing, right? All the way up to right. high school, college. Um, so yeah, just take your time, um, because it's going to get a lot easier for you, it's going to be a lot simpler. I like the way you're doing it because you're thinking in a language. When you speak it, think in it. Mm -hmm. Like I want it to be like instinct. Like this should be like, yeah, like easy to come out. Not like think about what to say. Like it should be like right out of your mouth like that. That's what, yeah. That's what I'm trying to treat it like, like how you guys both do. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, I'm not trying to like subconsciously know what to say. Like, no, you should already know I'm what to say. Say it like as if you're breathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's because because I'm I'm trying to I'm talking to my uh, my other friend. He's learning two different languages at the same time. He's learning Chinese and Japanese. And me and him, I like generally have conversations in Japanese as much as we can, so we can so it can just seem like normal. And it's it's like a practice. It's like a practice to make sure when you get you know when you get over there, the right thing is going to be much harder, much harder. Mm -hmm. So, so that that's the thing I'm just trying to just trying to keep up flow with. Yeah, because, just, because the language is necessary. Keep that flow. Keep that emphasis. Now, can you get a Japanese language partner? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, so you, that's going to be the next essential part. It's like doing 30 minutes language exchange uh, whenever you possibly can. And then make sure that it really is natural and not being rather relentless on this. But if you do this for about a year, 18 months around there, yeah, it's going to be easy after that. You're going to be like, yeah, the, the, why was it so hard? Why, why, was I, why was I so resistant before? Yeah, this is the way it is. And then you're just looking at other foreigners. You're like, what's your problem? Like, yeah. it's not that hard. I did it. You could do right. it too. 
and get your Japanese girl like a partner that doesn't want to really learn Jap really learn English cuz they've used they, they're not patient when they when they want to learn English they don't care about you learning Japanese they want to learn English get you someone that only speaks Japanese they're the best kind anyway and then just use your Japanese on her correct okay. ping pong that's correct yep and thank you and uh, i i guess uh, the, the question i have for both of you just like, just one big one in difference cuz you already answered the one about me bringing my wife over if i were to in america cuz i technically i don't want to be corrupted by freaking this indoctrination crap so I already, I already know what you told Saisachi. I'm like, thank you for thank you for saying that too. Because I'm like, no. Hell no. Like, I'm just not gonna let that happen. No. Sorry, IP, but I, that word had to be said. I'm sorry. I'm saying no. it with respect. It's not just I, I don't want her to be touched by this stuff over here. It's, it's terrible. Just, it's, it's not just Tony who has the correct situation. I've got a, a few friends who are married to Japanese women, and they uh they have between two and four children. And inside okay. that house, it is like little Tokyo or a little mm -hmm. Mie. Like that there is no Mie. Western culture <laughs> at all. The, mm -hmm. They're like, they're straight Japanese and uh, they don't want to act anything like the Americans do. So see, you don't have yeah, to worry so, about it. Yeah, because oh. with my house, the way I do it is I speak English with my son, even though I know Japanese. And my wife speaks Japanese with him. And I'm constantly telling him, speak Japanese with mommy, Japanese with mommy, Japanese with mommy. Because eight-year-old, they, they try to take the easy way out. I said, nope. You're not going to forget mm -hmm. Japanese because you're fluent in Japanese. You're not going to forget it. You're a dual citizen. You're not going to forget Japanese. Because it's my okay. house, my rules. <laughs> okay. All right. What's the best way you guys would uh, do to do a uh, dual citizenship once you've like established your family? What's the best way to do that? Uh, uh, they give you like 22, right? Theo is 22. You have to decide which one you want to take. That's right. So, so the kids have dual citizenship until they're 22 years old. You just need to have permanent residency uh, to the Japan. You you do not want to have Japanese citizenship. Don't even think about that. Keep your American citizenship, and okay. that's it. You just kind of have like this blended situation in terms of passports and stuff. It's not a hard problem. You just have to okay, register so, your uh, kids when they're born. All right. When they're born, okay. Like if they're born in the U.S., you got to register them with the Japanese consulate, and then you have to get them registered in Japan with through her through your in-laws. That way, they're they're citizens. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know. I know a side note. I'm good. Uh, IP. Just one quick thing I want to ask them. It's not like a really so much question, but I'm, I'm going to say this: the at the very beginning of the stream, you guys had me rolling. The the fact that you told me that a group of girls had to tell your friend Theo that he had to he had to pick a girl. <laughs> I was dying. I was like, what? <laughs> what is this? A dictatorship? <laughs> I was yeah. like, yo, yo, listen, you're going to date me, and you're not going to like it whether you <laughs> nah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Was, you guys have me rolling. I'm like, what? He was, he was pretty much liking that too. He was enjoying it. He wasn't even thinking about having a girlfriend, and suddenly he had a girlfriend. He was about 24 years old. They were like 19, oh. 20. Yeah. Yeah, he can't say no. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't gonna say no. So all right, they were, now with that they were all no. cute. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those, those mini skirts. Oh my god! Yeah. All right, IP. Uh, background. Thank you guys. You guys have been amazing. I gotta watch this stream like five to ten times to be honest. I got no <laughs> information to go down. Thanks, brother. Uh, thanks, thanks for willing to do the yeah. work. Shout out to Jay Bones for the two dollars super chat. Asia, so great. Why is Fear going to Brazil? Shush, because uh, Japan's pros. Brazil look for Japanese. That's why, right? <laughs> you have to get a, a Japanese Brazilian chick. Shout out to um, uh, <laughs> Neil Gotti for the four ninety nine dollar. My Okinawa wife has degree in English. Call in Neil Gotti. Uh, let's speak about your. Okinawa oh, Neil, yeah, yeah, we gotta talk, brother. We gotta, we gotta, gotta chop talk, it up, man. brother. Okinawa okay, um, wife, no. Uh, but he got lucky, it. Theo. He got lucky. Neil Gotti got lucky. We remember he was on the stream before. He got lucky. Okay. I had me one the first one, but that was a bad experience, brother. But he got lucky though. Okay. Let me he bring in um, right. uh, Sean M. How you doing, bro? What's up, man? Can you hear me? What's up, Sean? What up? Yep, what up, what up, what up? Not in care, brother. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Uh, just glad to be here. Uh, so one thing I wanted to ask, uh, going back to the tech side with uh, Theo and Tony. Um, so I've been studying Azure uh, here recently, you know, just through YouTube videos, uh, looking at different courses and different things. Would y'all recommend Azure if you're trying to get in the cloud or would you go AWS or does it really matter? 
I can answer that. Let me answer that one real quick. Okay, so Azure has a very big market share in Japan because of Microsoft, which Microsoft has a major uh, relationship with all the big companies. So Azure is actually the 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 area where you're probably going to be working if you do cloud. Now also you do there's opportunities with AWS, but Azure is like the big market leader. Whereas the United States is opposite. It's just the way it is. So you need to have your Japanese. Because Microsoft's still going to be a, a conservative company if you're going to be working with that kind of tech, and um, you need to know how to properly use Azure. That's the way it is. You need to be passing the tests uh, 303, 304, uh, 500. That's security, and then you need I think 204. That's DevOps. Um, I think it's DevOps professional. Um, <laughs> you need to have all of those tests before you set foot in Japan. Um, you do that, then you'll be okay. If you do DevOps as DevOps professional with AWS, and then you do a uh, solutions professional as well, uh, solutions architect professional, then you'll you have all of that together. Yeah, you'll be doing really well in Japan. No problem. Okay, that makes sense. And like, say like, um, while I'm over in the, in the States, obviously, because we can't go over there right now, uh, would you recommend, like, while I'm getting the certs, would you recommend, like, going into, like, a help desk so you can get a jump start in the in the field, or what would you say would be the best? You're not working uh, at all in that in that area? No, not right now. I was about to uh, switch into the field from another field. What are you working in now? Um, I'm in, like, health and wellness. I have a degree in uh, public relations. Why are you okay. – Okay, then, all right, fine. So um, you need to get the basic Azure test, I think it's 104. Mm -hmm. And then the basic AWS, which is Cloud Practitioner. You need to be serious about it. I'm te actually teach Cloud Practitioner. So you need to be very serious about it and make, make sure you do the jump into IT and then be doing IT in the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. Depending on how good you are, you need to go into the, doing a developer course, uh, some sort of developer cert with AWS as well, or a DevOps. Yep. And then yeah. from there, uh, you can keep on going. Thank you, Theo. Uh, thanks for that, Sean. M. Much appreciated, brother. Uh, good question, bro. Um, so, brothers, I'm going to end the live stream now. It's, I'm very tired. It's late over here in in the UK. I'm super tired. I've got plans this Saturday, so I'm really yeah. tired. Um, so let me go through everyone for one last statement. And uh, I just want to say... Um, Tony and Theo will be here tomorrow again for another live stream regarding how to steal the deal with Japanese women. So that should be another classic. But let me go to uh, Crazy Kaz. Do you, have, do you have one last statement, brother? Keep it very quick and short. Yep. Uh, a lot of information learned today. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate y'all time, everyone, including the guests, including myself coming in. All I can say is just what they said, put focus, put all your heart and energy into learning Japanese, uh, learning IT, learning uh, business, whatever you can to get into Japan. I'm telling you, man, like whatever you can to learn it, that's all we can do at this point. So uh, that's, that's, that's it. See you guys. Thank you, bro. Thanks, bro. Uh, Thomas him. you have one last statement, bro? Uh, another classic IP. Thank you very much. It's always a blessing to have Theo Thanks, and Tony um, Thanks, providing a lot of wisdom. So I say thank you both, brothers. Um, we're just gonna have to train like Goku until Japan reopens. Yeah. We train like Goku, wait on yep. the Namit Saga, so we can achieve <laughs> Super Saiyan. Yeah, yep. I'm serious about brothers. You know, use this time, uh, use the rest of this year, literally October, November, December. Just go ham on Japanese. So when uh, it opens early next year, let's get out there, brothers. You know, I'm gonna train um, like Goku. Thanks, Ivy. Yes, man. Thanks, uh, Shout out to uh, Thomas Demihin. Uh, side side sheet, you have one last closing statement, bro. Um, I'm just I pretty much want to say, you know, thanks to Theo and Tony, obviously, for confirming my analysis as to whether you know social status issue is a really big problem. But you know, obviously, in the US, it's kind of obviously a lot worse, I guess you could say. I might be slurring my speech because I'm tired, but it's just great to know that when you go overseas as a black male, you don't have to worry about anywhere near as much nonsense, assuming that you come out on point and you're a good dude. And it seems like you're more so judged based on the caliber of who you are as a man, as opposed to the fact that you fit a certain, I guess, stigma, if you will, which is really nice to hear. But thanks for that. That's all I got. Yeah, uh, thanks for that side side too. Thanks for that push yeah.
Um, at Mel, please uh, avoid swearing on the live stream chat, please. Let's keep it PG. Um, Jay Takashi, do you have any last statements, brother? I do. I have one in Japanese. Taskete kudete arigato. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. Good. And uh, uh, you, you guys, like I said, we have two legends on here trying to help us men to actually be successful over there, and they're black brothers. That's the main thing that really means a lot to me. And they've they've succeeded, they've endured, they've actually done the work, and they want us to do vice versa. I'm willing to put in. I'm willing to put in all this hard work in order to be over there, to actually have a life over there. That's what I've always wanted to do. And like I said, choice, choices and trade-offs, this is one of those things that we have to do. And um, I, I, thank, I thank both of you guys from the bottom of my heart for everything because even as a kid, I loved it, just loved the idea of being in that culture more so than anything. And um, whether, like I said, whether I went intentionally there for a wife or not, I would go, I would go there for my work first, and then that that technically will come second, if anything. <laughs> and um, I, I appreciate both y'all brothers for for your knowledge and your wisdom. It's like we have we have freaking Michael Jordan, freaking LeBron James in here. <laughs> <laughs> you, All right. Right. you can be you can be Jordan. I'll be James. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. I'll be James. Yeah. It's been me. <laughs> actually, Tony. Actually, Tony, you remind me of Ray Allen, actually, which is a compliment. Ray you Allen's know what? A oh my God, I got a story, real quick story on that. I, when I was driving my Porsche box a few years ago, I'm driving downtown mm -hmm. Seattle at night. People kept calling me Ray, and I was like, "Why do they keep calling me Ray?" They thought and Ray had the same car, he had a 911 conversion, and they thought I was Ray Allen. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna lie. You you got a bit right. of an image to him. Huh? I'm gonna sorry, sorry Jason Kashi, man. I need to <laughs> run through this very quickly, bro. <laughs> I got you, bro. All right, uh, Sean M. Uh, would you have any last statements, brother? Uh, thank you, Theo, Tony, IP. You know this is a this is a great stream. I learned a lot. I'm definitely gonna go uh, go back and look through it. You know. Thanks, bro. Okay, uh, thanks for that, Sean M. Thank you, bro. Um, Theo, WAF. Do you have any last statements, bro? Um, I just keep on studying, guys. Don't give up. Let us keep on guiding you, and uh, be serious. I like what Takeshi is doing. Uh, this reminds me of me when I was about 22 years old. I started suddenly producing the language and being serious. But I also knew that my focus was going to be in Japan and that was going to be the story of my life and that, you know, I was already veering away. And, um, you know, I'm still veering, what can I say? So uh, keep it up, guys. Do not give up. You can do it. Uh, we're here to help you. We're here to give you advice. You know, maybe we'll meet you in Japan. If not, maybe we'll, we'll be meeting you with some Japanese chicks in Brazil and making the J Bones all kinds of jealous. Did I say that? <laughs> oh, I yeah. did. I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Theo. Um, shout out to J Bones <laughs> for a $2 super chat. Theo, I better not see you in Brazil with any Latinas. Oh, let <laughs> Theo, if he wants Latinas, if he wants Asian, then let him do what he wants, bro. Let him enjoy his time in Brazil. Oh, yeah. But I, I got a super hotel room, man. I believe you. I will not go. <laughs> That's a nice spot, brother. <laughs> Huh. All right, shout out to Jay Barnes for the super chat. Thank you, bro. Uh, Tony, Tokyo 64, do you have any last closing statements, brother? Yes, man. I just want to thank Theo uh, for doing this up here with me, man, being a host up here. I mean, a guest up here with me. And thank you, of course, I always thank you, IP. Thank the panel, uh, Jay, Sean, you know, Sai Seiji, and Crazy Cars, and Thomas. Of course, Thomas, the brother. I like the way he talked, man. He always like, yo, fam. Thanks, fam. What's up, fam? I like that. I love that, man. I love that. In it. Hey, man, we fam, in it? We fam, in it? So that's all. I love, I love it, man. I love that guy, man, uh, Thomas Demerham. And so, and I also want to say the team, team Latina, look, brothers, I'm glad we talk about Asia, Latina. We've taken away the equation of just staying in the matrix. I don't, I don't care if we talk team Asia, Latina, Latina. Let's do it all the time, brothers. Take away that equation of the matrix. Take that out. Getting your passports. That's what it's all about. Getting your passports. But on this Japan one, man, Brothers, we really mean we're serious when we say you got to bring it. You got to bring your game. Jay remind me when I was a young blood too, man, studying Japanese every day. I was diligent, man. I was serious about it. And that's I've seen the rewards, brothers. So just don't give up. Never give up. Thank you, bro. And everyone, uh, I want to say a huge thank you to every single one, every single member of this live stream panel. A big thank you to Theo WAF and Tokyo64 for taking the time out to drop this classic uh, live stream um, okay. information. Uh, we will see these two brothers again tomorrow for another stream about Japanese women. 
don't miss it. That would be a classic live stream. And when I do drop this live stream on my channel, brothers, please can everyone comment on the live stream just so it gets pushed out for the YouTube algorithm. We're getting new people in every day. You can see you saw you saw it today earlier on. There was two people that super chat saying I'm new to the channel. So you know, you you brothers liking the video, um, commenting pushes out the videos to these kind of people to find this uh, intel and ed and edify them. So brothers, thank you very much. Um, I will see you brothers um, on my next live stream uh, tomorrow. Theo, Tony, see you brothers tomorrow and um, we'll, we'll crack on from there. Brothers, enjoy the night, afternoon, morning, wherever you are and peace out brothers. I will see you all on my next live stream. Take